You're listening to Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Truth, truth. October 5th, 2019. This is Spingola Speaks, and this is Deanna Spingola. And I'm broadcasting, as usual, from the Chicago suburbs. Thanks for joining me today at republicbroadcasting.org. I hope that you will visit my website, spingola.com. You may access the schedule page, and all you have to do is click on the radio schedule button on the left, Uh, to see who I've had on the program uh, in the past as well as in the future. If you wish to ask questions or make comments during the program, email comment at spingola.email. I only use this email address three hours a week during the program. Join others in the chat room at spingola.chatango.com. Remember that the archives... For this program, <clears throat> excuse me, are at spingolaspeaks.net and republicbroadcasting.org. We will take calls in the third hour at 800-313-9443. My guest today is Brad Huddleston. That's H-U-D-D-L-E-S-T-O-N. His website is... BradHuddleston.com. Brad, welcome to the program. Deanna, thank you very much. I'm very honored to be with you. I am totally, absolutely in a state of shock. Mm. After after watching the um, the DVD, the three three part DVD. Well, it's actually more parts, but there are three three D- DVDs. Um, I, I'm just in a state of shock. I really am. Uh, I failed to mention that, uh, Brad is the author of Digital Cocaine, A Journey Toward Eye Balance. Uh, you must, you just absolutely must visit his website. Uh, <laughs> you absolutely must listen to what this brave gentleman has to say, um, as I say, I I never imagined ever in my wildest dreams how pervasive the the internet or the uh, how pervasive the evil on the internet has progressed in in a relatively short period of time, and how much damage it has done to the children. Not just of our nation, but of the earth. I'm um, after watching uh, Pornia. I I shed some tears. I, I I just it impacted me so greatly. I had no idea, mm. and I I think a lot of parents don't. They they have no idea. Yeah, I agree with you, Deanna. And I, I actually shed some tears over that one too and and I lost sleep I really did I, it was the most disturbing uh, research that I'd ever done and then I was asked as you saw in this DVD series to present it quite a lot in front of a quite a large group of people and um, I was actually asked to be that explicit and to show how the children in particular are, are getting into pornography so yeah it's it, the the brain i just got back i just returned from south africa i'm in collaboration with the neuroscience division at the university of south africa so i was there speaking at churches and at a big youth conference uh, a student convention education conference but then i did a three-day research and so what we were looking at for example is the brain's response to just 
notifications to the phone. We had pathology come in and measure cortisol levels, which are the stress hormones that build up just from interacting with it. But that said, the brain scans are what are, are actually very, very scary. When you look at the brain scans of people who have crossed over into digital addiction, they either look like a heroin addict's brain scans or a cocaine addicts. And in the case of pornography, it's as if they have mixed the cocaine and the heroin together. And so those SPECT scans are horrific. And so, you know, the thing that we don't have are scans in children. It's been difficult, I think, for some of the researchers to have access to the children on that level. But I go into schools all over the world and have been granted access to do qualitative and quantitative research. And what we're finding is is absolutely horrific. So I just thank you, Deanna, for believing in, <laughs> in this message and helping me to get the word out. Um, I, I think probably you're one of the most important guests I've ever had on the program. Oh, thank you. Uh, because this, the pervasiveness of what you're talking about is so great. It impacts the, the, the greatest majority of the, of the population. And, um, it, it's just amazing to me. I, I don't use a cell phone I I in fact I did buy one one of the first ones that came out was uh, produced by Motorola and they referred to it as the brick <laughs> <laughs> and I you probably remember that or or have heard reference to it mm -hmm. and um and I thought wow this is really terrific and it was great because I was traveling a lot uh for my job uh, but I I have a cell phone. I keep it. It's a it's a flip phone. It doesn't do anything. I keep it turned off in my purse for emergency only. I have an iPad that I usually have offline. I turn off my router at night. I pretty much do a lot of stuff offline. Um, I don't do I I don't engage in Facebook, social media. I do tweet out the programs each week. Um, I, when Facebook first became available, I looked at it. I spent a little bit of time with it. I thought, this, this is very time-consuming. It's kind of a fake, a, a fake interaction with people that you have no idea who you're talking to. And so I immediately quit using it um, I got rid of the TV when my children were young because I recognized that it was I was using it as a babysitter we played board games we, we played Clue and Monopoly and, and Checkers and every game that you could you could think of that was available and um, I recognized after we got rid of the television how I had used it as a babysitter. And um, you say in your presentation, do not ever put your, put your child in front of a screen. And then you included, including a television. Mm -hmm. And that gives quite a bit of anxiety to parents. I was speaking out in Las Vegas, and I'll never forget this. I had to go from one meeting uh, to another one. And what I had to do is I had to walk off the, the podium get in a car, drive across town, and walk straight onto another podium. And it was highly timed. And I apologize to the audience in advance because normally when I speak, I, I'm more than happy to hang around afterwards and talk to people and chat and answer further questions and so forth. I don't ever like to be rude. But I explained to them I had to leave, and uh, so I did. And I uh, closed in prayer. It happened to be a church. And then I, I said my amen, grabbed my uh, tablet, was running out the door and a lady got up and and followed me and everyone saw her get up and follow me and she kept saying i've got to talk to you i have to talk to you and i was a bit put off but you know i, I turned around and i wanted to be helpful to this dear lady and i finally said yes ma'am how can i help you and she said does television count and i said yeah, yes it does and the the panic that sets in with parents because Deanna, the, the sad reality is, and I mean no judgment toward anyone, I really don't. We just have such a disparity between this current generation of millennials, which are Generation Y, their children, which is Generation Z, and then our parents and grandparents. And these, this current crop of parents, by and large, it's not true of everyone, but in the big picture, 
they don't know how to raise their children face to face. They have relied on the devices. They have relied on television. And when you threaten that, anxiety results. And again, I, I, I make no judgment. I'm just telling you what the observation has been globally. And so we have a problem where we're, we're going to have to train parents, and again, to be parents, and the children need, instead of a screen, they need a face, a real face, making faces to them and noises and, and spending time for proper brain development, just proper emotional brain development and creative development of the brain. And when you subject that little underdeveloped psyche, emotions, and brains to an artificial environment known as a screen – Even if it is education, the brain does not know and differentiate between content. And so what we have done is justified our excessive use of this uh, babysitter by saying, well, I'll just put an education game or apps on there and they'll be learning. Well, the problem is research has been done. And clearly, if anything is reward based, it is no different than a slot machine, the slot machine technology that gets us addicted. I, God, heaven forbid I'd ever be addicted. I don't gamble. Uh, Not to say that I couldn't slip up, but I don't. But I happen to know what are in those slot machines. It's called the variable ratio reward schedule, and it's programmed purposely to let the player uh, of the slot machine to win a certain percentage of the time. And that anticipation of winning is what gets us addicted through a chemical in the brain called dopamine. Well, Minecraft, for example, is probably one of the most lethal video games on earth, and it was marketed as an education game. That game has built into it the exact same technology that's put into slot machines. Many of the video games do. So they label it video game, the video game education, I should say, But the problem is if there are any rewards built in, the brain is receiving too much of this neurotransmitter called dopamine. So it's actually dopamine that makes us feel high. It's what gets us addicted. And, of course, everything that we use to babysit the children in terms of a screen is producing too much of that chemical. And I know that there are those listening to us, Deanna, parents. I do not want them to feel guilty. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to help. I'm not trying to shame them in any way, shape, or form. We have all fallen into this. I have a computer science degree, and I know what it's like to be massively addicted to screens, and so I judge no one. I can just honestly say, Deanna, that once you detox, the grass truly is greener on this side of the fence. When you come out of that virtual world, let your brain reset. You're, you're better off emotionally, spiritually, relationally. And so that is the ultimate goal. I just want to make that clear up front. So as we continue to talk about some of these dark, dark things, the end game here is to help people. Exactly. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. What I, what I was, as I was listening to, to your program and reading, uh, you talked about Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. And uh, Steve Jobs, and uh, and the fact that um, he introduced uh, in 2006, there was the introduction of the smartphone, and um, so he was uh, being interviewed and uh, about his children. Oh, what a wonderful thing! And your children probably. How do your children like these? And what was his response? He said they have never used it. And that has shocked the world because uh, he never did. And I often say to my audience, as you know, Steve Jobs and many, many other of the tech executives and employees in Silicon Valley who send their children to non-tech schools and they agree to either limit or not have it at home either, they love their children dearly. They care very much about their brain health and emotional health, not your children, their children. And so what I recommend for those who, you know, they, they have that term for, for Apple, people who are really enamored with Apple, they call them fanboys. And what I say to the fanboys, if you really admire Apple and Steve Jobs that much, why don't you raise your children like he did and preserve their brain and preserve their emotions and let them pass through those adolescent stages untouched just like Steve Jobs did? That was on purpose. Wow. So there – they're more interested. They were more interested in making money, of course, uh, than they were in protecting the nation's children, the world's children. And um, just since well, 2006, there have been so many, so many children who have become addicted, who have become not just addicted to 
their technology, but have become, and this is where it gets terrible, have become addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just, like I said, I was just absolutely shocked. The way that the internet is set up, and you you mentioned uh, YouTube, and there's so many good things that are banned on YouTube, and yet you can find most anything on YouTube. And if a child uh, makes a mistake in typing something in to the, the search machine, and there are alternatives to, to Google, but if they make a mistake, they will automatically be directed to something well well even they use disney characters to draw mm -hmm. children in i i am just in such a state of shock i i just hope and pray that people will will look at at the program that you've put together pornea a global tragedy and it's available through your website brad huddleston dot com um I, i'm just overwhelmed just yeah. had no idea had had no idea uh you say that there should be absolutely no screens no technology in the bedrooms including the adult parents no technology in the bedrooms yeah, i the, agree the average age of a video gamer deanna you care to take a guess? I mean, you've seen the presentation, so you would know. Um, the Software Entertainment Association that monitors this, that's the organization that represents the video game industry. So naturally, they're going to track these demographics quite carefully to see who to, who their target audience would be. The last that, that comes out every year, it's, it's updated every year. This year, very similarly to the previous years, the average age of a video gamer is 35 so this is not a child's problem primarily. It is a child's problem, but it is primarily an adult problem. And there is a very high statistical correlation between hardcore video gamers and porn addicts. They go hand in hand. So not only do we have to worry about the children, but the parents have often be, been desensitized, gone into addiction. And so they're not keeping an eye on their kids uh, as they should. But the, the reason why we say the bedroom 80% of the problems that I write about, research, talk about, happens in the bedroom with the door shut. There's so much information now where schools around the world who have implemented the one-to-one -one laptop and tablet programs, and I go into these schools and try to assist and consult with them globally. Many of those schools are starting to take them out now. It has just been a disaster. And in terms of cell phones, France has banned them in the in the high schools, as has Canada. Australia, I just came back from Australia not long ago and uh, was there for three months. I go there every year. Uh, they spend more time in the classroom, Australia does, than any other nation on earth with technology. So they have massive problems there. But the state of Queensland just initiated a ban. Uh, the state of Victoria, rather, I should say, did. But then the rest of the states also are following suit. So you're starting to see – a lot of changes globally around the world, and it's not so much the technology in and of itself. It's just that it's been implemented without any research, without any brain research. It's just been implemented as a good idea, and a lot of what you're seeing are unintended consequences. But that said, the the primary problem is the bedroom with the door shut, and parents who think that everything that I'm saying, their child is the exception. Most parents believe their child would never do anything naughty. And, of course, if we were all to reflect back on when we were kids, of course we would do bad things. That's just what we do. And then we need parental guidance to correct us, discipline us, and so forth. But you have a situation now when the parents uh, get, receive a phone call from the teacher. It, 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 I hear this all over the world, Deanna, that instead of correcting the child, the parent will jump all over the teacher as though the teacher's the guilty one. And so that's been a paradigm shift as well, the discipline and the breakdown of discipline in the home. So when it comes to technology, there's also no discipline. It's just unregulated. They let the child have it. They'll slap a video game on there that's claimed to be educational, and they run amok. But right along with that, they have access to the pornography. It's totally uh, unmonitored. The last st stat that I saw, only 5% of our homes have any filtering software. So clearly we have a problem well all righty we are going to a three-minute break we will be right back
folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER, stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation. And Angioprim is the result, a safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now to Angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or to speak with a trained consultant, give Angioprim a call at 954-882-7221. That's 954-882-7221. Starts with you and me. It starts with you and me We all can be heroes If we take the lead To change the bad to good To live in harmony It starts with you and me oh, <coughs> Excuse me. All righty, we are back. We are back with our guest, and our guest today is Brad Huddleston. His website is bradhuddleston.com. That's H-U-D-D-L-E-S-T-O-N. And be sure and click on all of the links at the top of the page. Um, he is talking about something that really relates to the majority of the population. Uh, the population has changed drastically in the last uh, 20 years because of the inventions and the the uh, what was uh, technology can be good as he indicates he uses technology in his presentations it can be wonderful it's 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 terrific however it has so many negative negative things that can happen to our brains to our children to if to their safety, it, it involves child trafficking. It involves false friends. It involves people who are who are using this technology to destroy the brains of our children. I, it's it's just too too awful to even. Well, it is. We need to talk about it. It needs to be talked about. We do, and 
Dan, again, thank you for allowing me to come on your program and talk about this for for three hours. It's critical that we get the word out. And, you know, in the early days, I had pushback. I've I've written two books about this now. The first one that I wrote is called The Dark Side of Technology, and that was uh, 10 years ago. Right. It's quite a bit of pushback on that. It's been temporarily uh, pulled from uh, print so that I can update it. Uh, You know, technology updates so rapidly. There's some tech terms in there that science regarding the brain is all still legitimate, but a lot of tech terms have changed. But since this new book came out, Digital Cocaine, and I'm, I'm in the middle of another one called Digital Rehab, Digital Detox and Beyond is the subtitle. That There are 400 digital detox rehabilitation centers in South Korea alone. And some of the best uh, science, neuroscience is being done in South Korea. I keynoted there at Global Youth Forum. And they are indeed the most wired nation on earth. They have the best video gamers. They have the fastest internet. They've taken what Silicon Valley has invented, and and I kind of liken it to putting it on steroids. And so their culture, their children, everyone are just absolutely saturated. But as a result of that super saturation, they are detoxing children as young as three years of age. And we're starting to see terms uh, on Alzheimer's websites now are called digital dementia that was first discovered in south korea at least to my knowledge that's where i first heard about it was south korea they started finding children with severe memory loss and it was mimicking alzheimer's so we are having a a huge huge problem and i'm often asked is there a conspiracy behind this you know i think if you are a spiritual person it would be easy to say yes and see that from a spiritual perspective the enemy of our souls definitely what I can tell you is that many companies employ uh, certain firms that study the brain and use neuroscience. There's a company, for example, called Dopamine Labs. And dopamine, as I mentioned earlier in the program, is what actually gets us addicted. And what Dopamine Labs does, they have neuroscientists there that they've employed to study your app so that they can maximize the dopamine rush Uh, By releasing a certain amount of likes at a certain amount of time, there are algorithms that track us, uh, as we already know, all of our apps. And so they're manipulating us with different notifications to keep this dopamine flowing in our brain that keeps us coming back to that app. And so this is not an Internet conspiracy. You can Google the word, uh, the company Dopamine Labs. Uh, You know, Google uses the same sort of technology to uh, keep us hooked and coming back perpetually. What they're doing is manipulating our brains to produce large quantities of dopamine. And when you do that, ethical issues arise, particularly around children. You know, it's one thing to say to, to, you know, I, I'm I lean libertarian on some things, but because of my Christian background uh, and I'm a minister, there's a moral thing that says at least at least leave the children alone. Until they come of age and can can make it an informed decision, and I think ethically we need to be told that we're being manipulated so that we can at least have the choice to either submit to it or reject it. But most people are totally unaware of the brain brain hacking techniques that go on. And again, it sounds like an internet conspiracy until you know even the left wing CNN uh, have run stories about this and raised the alarm bells, which I applaud them for for doing that. So yeah, it's it's a career that I did not mean to have uh i've been in uh ministry for quite some time and after i wrote that book the dark side of technology everything just shifted for me so you know the 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 strange thing deanna i go to third world countries developing countries all the time i just came back from africa as i mentioned but last year i was in sri lanka i was in indonesia i've been in cambodia and these places and you know there are places on earth where children do not have food but they have cell phones and if that is if that is not a conspiracy at some level, I don't know what is because it, it breaks your heart. They they will find a way to get data and phones, but in some cases they do not have appropriate housing or food. Amazing. All righty. We will be right back. Stay with us. are tuned in to the republic broadcasting network visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org
Many people write us about their experience with Extendivite. Allow me to read you some from Amazon.com. This product is superb. I have been taking it for about a year now, and I can feel my cardiovascular system run like a Swiss watch. I definitely recommend this product for anyone that has high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and heart palpitations, A+. It's potent, but it works. I have been waking up for the past three years with numb hands, and a week into using Extendivite, my numb hand seemed to have cleared up. My circulation was off, and now it's back on track. So I'm happy. I feel so energized, and I have my husband on it now. My mother-in-law has cholesterol problems, so I bought her a bottle as well. Thank you so much. Love the product. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Public Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong part and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not, or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855, the number 2, keep it today. It starts with you and me, it starts with you and me, we all can be heroes if we take the lead. All righty, we are back. Our guest today is Brad Huddleston. He is the author of Digital Cocaine and the dark side of technology, not currently available, but is being updated. And Pornia, the a global tragedy, which is a DVD program that every everybody should listen to, watch, and it's just amazing. Uh, this is affecting uh, everyone and parents. Parents seem to believe that. If a school has all of this technology that somehow is going to improve their child's education, which in fact is just the opposite because it affects attention spans, it affects the child's ability to to really learn uh, the things that they need to learn using regular things that they can hold in their hands. Uh, it, rather than something that is going to give them kind of the immediate gratification that you've talked about uh, in your work. Right. And, Dan, I'm often asked, how, how is the screen addictive? I mean, what, what is it about the screen? Is it the actual photons? Is it, you know, what is it? Well, it's a number of things, but in its simplest form, it has to do with brain stimulation that gets us hooked. And your brain can be stimulated in in any number of ways. You know, an alcoholic doesn't start off being an alcoholic. They may drink a couple of beers when they come home after work to decompress. 
And that alcohol that they drink is not actually what they're feeling. That alcohol is actually an accelerant or uh, a catalyst to release this neurotransmitter I keep talking about called dopamine. And so that dopamine is called the happy chemical. Nothing wrong with it until you get too much. And once you get too much of it, the brain starts to fight back. It starts to build up resistance to it. And if you want to continue to feel that high at the same level, you have to do the activity or drink or snort or whatever it is more and more. So the way stimulation gets into the brain is pretty simple. If it's alcohol, it comes in through the mouth, gets metabolized into the liver, and then it makes its way into the bloodstream, up to the brain, and and the accelerant then pushes out dopamine. If it is heroin, it could come in through a vein, and it's directly into the bloodstream. No, No metabolism needed. It goes in there, and it produces dopamine. Well, similarly, the eyes become the stimulant or the gateway for the stimulant. So when you are looking at the screen and you are being enticed by the content, the brain gets excited. And the area of our brain that controls the eyes is in the back of the head, and that's where you actually see things, and that stimulation causes a release of dopamine. And your body starts to build up resistance, let's say, to social media. And so we don't start off being addicted to social media, but that feel good of the likes coming through, of being able to you know, speak with someone or have instant access, that dopamine feels really, really good. And next thing you know, your head stays down all the time, much like an alcoholic has to continuously drink to keep feeling. And that's because the brain is building up the same dopaminergic uh, resistance or resistance to the dopamine. And so this barrier forms in the brain trying to push out all this extra dopamine, and you end up addicted. Some things get you there quicker than others, uh, and some things have a more detrimental effect, such as pornography. We keep talking about that. And with an underdeveloped brain, I think the thing that is very scary as a researcher is the truth of the matter is, Deanna, we have no idea what the long-term consequences are. We have plenty of data for cocaine, for alcohol, for heroin, but we have no idea that the preliminary results of these brain scans, the research project that we just completed at the University of South Africa last week, uh, we don't have the results in, but already we can tell you that things are bad and we we care. I mean, the reason I do this is not because I enjoy pushback or having a, a controversial message. I'm just like anybody else. You you want to be liked. You want to. But the thing that drives me is I want to help people more than I'm worried about their anger, more than I'm worried about the pushback. And I care about our country. I, I'm you know I bleed red, white, and blue, and I've watched this country disintegrate. I've watched this get the grips on on the entire planet. But I'm more concerned about my own country than anywhere else. Uh, and so we want to do something about it. And, and being on a show like this is one of the ways we can do that. So, again, thank you. And I want to thank our audience, too, for, for being so open to this because it goes against the culture. This goes against everything that we've been told is legitimate. But fortunately for me, the controversy ended in about 2016 when stories that we referred to earlier about Steve Jobs and the tech executives in Silicon Valley and how they raised their children. Once the media got a hold of that, uh, I've always been in demand, thank God, and it's given me a job. But the controversy surrounding it has lessened, and the openness to a message like this is growing. So I do have some hope that we're we're making at least a dent in this problem. Indeed. Uh, Now, you talked about the brain, uh, about uh, addictions and and dopamine. Um, And in your program, in your DVD program, uh, you talked about the frontal development of, of a child and that that does not develop until they are a certain age. And so they really can't make rational decisions. So when does that develop in the in a person? Right. You know, what you're referring to, Deanna, is the prefrontal cortex. So if you right. put if your hand on your forehead, right behind your hand or right behind your forehead is that area of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. It's the area of the brain where we understand the consequences of our behavior. It's the area of the brain where we reason. And that does not finish developing in any of us until approximately 25 years of age. It's the last part of the brain to develop. So if you hand a drug, any drug, including a screen, to a child, they just don't have the brakes or the ability to reason through. It's easy for an adult to look at them and say, would you put that thing down and eat dinner and talk to us? It's easy for us to see what they're doing, but for them – 
they don't have the brakes to do it. So you can think of the middle of the brain. It's called the reward circuit, and that is where all of this pleasure takes place. And the area that uh, the pleasure center of the brain, the technical term for it, if there are any medical folks listening, it's called the nucleus accumbens, and surrounding that is this reward circuit. And it's called the reward circuit because when we stimulate that area of the brain, we are rewarded with pleasure. You can think of that as the gas pedal in the car, the accelerator. You, you mash the gas pedal, and gasoline goes into the engine, and it revs. In this case, the gasoline is the dopamine. Now, the brakes, the part of the brain that says, you know what, you've had enough, you should shut this off, you should go to bed, that is the prefrontal cortex. Well, when addiction sets in, the brakes fail, but the gas pedal is stuck. So that's what addiction is. It's the inability to stop. So a child has a double problem. They don't have very many breaks to begin with because that brain, that part of the brain is underdeveloped. So they do have some capacity, but not very much. So addiction takes what little they have away from them, and they love for the gas pedal to be mashed to the floor and having lots of gasoline going into the engine and revving it through the Netflix binging, through social media, through the video games, through the pornography. Adults do as well. It's just that adults in the early stages have the ability to put the brakes on it better, but again, once addiction sets in, the gas pedal is stuck, but the prefrontal cortex or the brakes are completely failed. And so you're revving and you're revving and you're going down that path of keeping your head down, going in social media, texting incessantly, video gaming incessantly, and then the symptoms start to appear. So in an alcoholic, the symptoms would be, for, for example, cirrhosis of the liver. In a smoker, it would be uh, lung problems. Uh, it, but in a digital addict, I'll just give you the top symptoms. Number one is anger combined with aggression. So you give a child a tablet, you babysit them with the television, but when you take it away, over time, that anger, those fits, those tantrums grow in intensity. Secondly is anxiety and depression, sometimes with no other known factor contributing to it because it, it causes it or if it is resident, it exacerbates it tremendously. Thirdly would be irritability. And Deanne, I'll just pause before I give you the other three. All of these symptoms are common to all of us. We, we have them. But when I'm talking to doctors and counselors and psychologists, I will say to them, would you rather treat a patient with a normal level of life stress or would you rather have it with a, an extreme exacerbation of these? And so part of the treatment modality that they have to have is detoxing people to find out what part is being caused by the digital because these symptoms definitely either cause it or exacerbates an existing underlying condition. So number four, attention deficits. You mentioned that earlier. Lots of research on ADD and ADHD being actually caused by the brain being subjected to the digital domain. And then, of course, sleep loss. Just, you know, an accumulated sleep deficit alone will cause all kinds of anxiety disorders, which is absolutely off the charts. And it's been so shocking to me as I fly around the world how many people get on airplanes with comfort pets and children who have to leave to go speak to their counselor right in the middle of a math lesson. It's the anxiety caused by the digital and the lack of sleep. And then lastly, emotional numbness. The irony is the more we stimulate ourselves, the more emotionally numb and withdrawn that we come, we, we become. And that medical condition is called anhedonia. The middle word there is hedon, from which we get our modern word hedonism, the ongoing pursuit of pleasure. You put an in front of it, it means it's the lack of pleasure. You, you have a hard time feeling unless you are hyper-stimulating yourselves, which means you're going to close the door. You're going to look at more and more vile porn, or you're going to have to you know, play video games for hours and hours and hours just to feel something. And anything that doesn't produce a lot of dopamine, such as human to human, interaction is boring things like school work is boring things like going to have a cup of coffee with someone is boring or going to church is boring or grandma and granddad's for the holidays the kids will say can i take the tablet and it's because grandma and granddad are going to generate the proper amount of dopamine for human interaction but they're bored with that they've built up resistance and so what do they say i want to take the tablet and so they'll take the tablet they'll go and withdraw somewhere and they'll play the video games and have no relationship with the family, even though they're under the same roof with them. So we have a lot of work to do, and I, I, we're seeing the breakdown of our country, our society in general, and it's a global epidemic. 
And again, Deanna, thanks for helping me to get the word out because I simply don't want to just curse the darkness, but switch on a light so that we can actually do something positive about it. I, um, which I totally appreciate. Um, I heard a story recently about a family that went to a restaurant and uh, they had a four-year-old who had his his phone with him and uh, the food, they ordered the, the food. The food was delivered to the table. Uh, the child would not put his phone down. So instead of his parents demanding that he put his phone down and eat, his mother actually spoon-fed him while he continued to look on his screen. And I thought, oh, my gosh, what is wrong with these parents that they <laughs> – go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I... – Look, as shocking as that may sound, Deanna, you are absolutely telling the truth. I will verify that around the world. I I wonder the same thing. The coddling of the children without those boundaries and discipline, and then once addiction sets in, they become absolutely hopeless. They're embarrassed. They don't want the fits in the public square. They go into the mall, and the kid is throwing the fits. And the only thing they can do to avoid the embarrassment and to calm that child is to give them a hit of the drug or a digital fix. And so as shocking as it may sound what you just said, I want to back you up, Deanna. It is absolutely true. I see similar things all over this planet, and it is scary. Right. Now, we talked about previously that South Korea is the most wired and that they have these uh, centers set up in order to help the people who are suffering from Mm -hmm. digital dementia and um, and they are a very small country but yet they are they are the most wired Uh, you also mentioned China Mm-hmm. as having uh, a great deal of th- this issue. Um, and so they have set up all these centers because they now recognize that that what they've done is really very detrimental. And it's a small country. South Korea is a small country. And yet they have all these centers. Well, you have to ask yourself, and I'm asked this question all the time, why is it would a small country like South Korea have 400 of them I'm published in China. My book, Digital Cocaine, has just been translated into Mandarin. Why is it that they have all these centers, but America does not? Uh, Yes. Well, there's a reason for that. Now, I only can give you part of the reason. There's this manual that doctors and clinicians use and psychologists called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Now, we're up to the version five. Right. Strangely enough, Deanna... That book does not allow for a diagnosis of digital addiction. Now, here's what's unknown. Why not? Uh, There are theories. I have my own. But the truth is nobody knows. So when you go to a doctor, and I work with quite a few doctors, they will privately tell you, yes, it's a very real problem. But in terms of giving you a clinical diagnosis of digital addiction, they can't, unlike the East, speaking of South Korea, China, their government, they don't go by our Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Now, other countries that do use ours uh, loosely would be Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and places like that. And that's why in those countries you also don't see treatment centers. But in the in the East, where they don't use our manual, they go, well, of course these kids are addicted. And so they funded these centers and they do neuroscience. But why it is not in our statistical manual of mental disorders, the truth is nobody knows. But I think it's clear that somebody up at the top knows it's a problem and it's not in there and it should be. Yes. Uh, yes. Why isn't it there? Well, I can I can speculate, but it, it, I want to make it very clear, Dan. I'm speculating. Our our economy is is digital now for the most part. Now, thankfully, our president. I saw the manufacturing stats today. It's been amazing when they said we would never have manufacturing jobs in this country again. Uh, we do. We have a lot. However, primarily our economy is still digitally based, and so there's no incentive to get people detoxed otherwise the economy would suffer now that's my educated guess but it is what i can tell you it is not in that manual and the people at the top 
are bound to know that there is a problem. Uh, yes. Um, I, I happen to have that manual, and uh, it, it, there's no mention of it at all. That That is very interesting. Well, uh, that, that needs to be investigated, uh, if we could... But, but I, I have made no headway, um, you know, trying to figure that one out. Wow. Um, well, um, in a country, too, that also the, the gross national product uh, happens to be medications. Yep. You make a good point. And I agree with you. So you have to kind of wonder, okay... Uh, they wouldn't be making as much money on those medications if they actually fixed the the key problem. Okay, uh, we'll be right back in three minutes. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Don't regret growing old. It's a privilege denied to many. Heart disease is taking our youth from us. Young people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond are dying needlessly. One of the hardest messages I've ever had to deliver is to convince people that something natural like Extendivite should be taken as a preventative measure. I'm sure you heard an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Extendivite is that ounce. Take Extendivite for one year and see what your doctor has to say and how much better you feel. Herbs take time to address the problem. It took years of life to have a problem. Give Extendivite one year to fix the problem. Don't wait until it's too late. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com or visit us on Amazon. Extend your life with Extendivite. Folks, this is very important information. What's to be said about CBD? Ancientlifeoil.com. Our CBD is made from hemp and has 0.003 THC, which means this wonderful product won't get you high. No matter what amount you take, what does CBD do for the body? My hands are tied. But you can Google CBD benefits and be astounded. When you're finished reading, you'll want to log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com and purchase. Life is good when you feel good. People are tired of pain. People are asking for non-GMO organic products to help them with, (laughs) you fill in the blank. Legal in 49 states, and again, our CBD is made from hemp. Ancient Life Oil is about helping people one by one by one. If you wonder how good the product is, the CEO takes it every day without miss. Ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Have a great day. All righty. We are back. We are back with our guest, and our guest is Brad Huddleston. His website is bradhuddleston.com. He is the author of Digital Cocaine, which is a fabulous book, uh, Digital Cocaine, A Journey Toward Eye Balance. Uh, it's it's fabulous. And uh, w- with my books, I have them spiral bound so that I can open them flat and I've had it spiral bound, so it's it's just a, 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 a that's just my favorite books is what I 
what I have spiral bound. And um, just the, the chapters that he has in here, the whole book, you, you absolutely need to read this book. It should be the number one book that you purchase the next time you you uh, go to his website or purchase it today from his website. Uh, and uh, uh, the first chapter is Drugs by Another Name. Um, and there are socially acceptable addictions, uh, but then he also uh, goes right to pornography and heroin. And we all know that heroin's bad. We all know that cocaine is bad. Uh, and he's talking about the, the same kinds of, of things, those things that, that affect a person's brain, that uh, digital the technology that has been promoted and pushed by Silicon Valley uh, is probably worse because people don't typically take those two drugs together, heroin, and, and they, it, they just do technology, but it has the exact same effect on the brain. But it's, it's, it seems like it's benign, but it's worse. It's so much worse than than the drug that you might be addicted than a drug that you might be addicted to or somebody might be addicted to, um, it causes all of these uh, these emotional problems, this emotional numbness uh, that he referred to, um, and oh my gosh, this is I, I'm I'm in a state of shock. I really am mm-hmm. because you introduce things that I never dreamed of. I knew that I didn't like Facebook, but you uh, you gave a different scenario about Facebook, that if a child uh, gets mad at a parent, they assume that all these people that they have befriended or friended on Facebook are somehow real and legitimate uh, instead of being well, there are many predators, and the predators are going to use uh, social media to um, to in- get pe- get children into trafficking, into uh, sharing uh, naked pictures. Uh, there are a lot of predators that are using social media to gain access to children, your children. And the problem, Dan, is that Ugh. most parents don't believe it would happen to their child. I work with law enforcement, and one of the key places I do that is in Australia. I could tell you horror stories, but listen, parents, it does apply to you and your home. Right. And let's talk about Australia when we come back. Be right back. Okay. are your arteries. Deteriorating circulation has a number of early warning signs. High cholesterol, high blood pressure, fingers and or toes often go cold, arms and or legs often go to sleep, sharp diagonal crease in the earlobe, short walks cause cramping or pains in legs, memory is not as good as it used to be, ankles swell late in the day, chest pain after physical exercise or emotional stress. If you experience even one of these symptoms, your circulatory system is crying out for attention. Extendivite is a natural solution to help improve your overall health. Extendivite is not your average heart tonic. To order, call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com or find us on Amazon. Extend your life with Extendivite. 
This is RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network. guest today is Brad Huddleston. His website is bradhuddleston.com. He is the author of Digital Cocaine and The Dark Side of Technology, now being updated, and Pornia, A Global Tragedy, which is a DVD program that everyone should should see. It's uh, it's just amazing, and you can you can uh, see parts of it uh, by going to his website. Please visit his website, bradhuddleston.com, and look at the links at the top. Uh, this is such a pervasive problem, and I had I had no idea. I just simply had no idea. Now you did spend you have spent a lot of time uh, in Australia with the Aussies, and you. Uh, you had some stories to tell and some uh, – it was just very interesting. Uh, the the problem is so so worldwide. Yeah, Dan, one of the – I've been going to Australia since the year 2000, and uh, I speak on the weekends. I'm doing a lot of spiritual things in the churches, but during the week – uh, I'm in schools and doing tours and speaking to literally thousands and thousands of students. I absolutely love being with them. Uh, this generation drives me mad sometimes with their technology, but I have a heart for them. God has just given me a tremendous heart to help and turn on a light and to help their parents. So a day would typically go like this. I'll hook up uh, with law enforcement, connect with them, particularly in a region up in, in far north uh, Queensland, and uh, well, in north Queensland, I should say. I have a very close friend there who's in charge. His name is Nigel Dalton, Sergeant Nigel Dalton. And he's in charge of the crime prevention unit there with the Queensland police. And so what they do is they bring me in, and we do these tours. And they are talking about, when they do their presentations, the, the legal side of sexting and how you can be brought up on porn charges and how pedophiles are tracked down and the consequences of bullying and things like that. And I will come in with a synergistic message with the, about the brain, th- talking similarly to what we're talking here. I'll talk about what goes on in the brain when they bully each other online. Basically, you have to talk about post-traumatic stress disorder because that's what the brain scans show in children who've been bullied online and in the schoolyard. So I'll just give you one story to give you an example. I mentioned before uh, Minecraft has the variable ratio reward schedule built into it, which is the same technology built into slot machines, and that's done to get the children hooked on on this alleged education game. My friend Sergeant Nigel Dalton was uh, heading home. He was in the police car, and he heard a call come over the radio that was – uh, close to his home, and uh, an 11 year old was trashing the house, just absolutely trashing the house, and didn't know what was going on. But he decided because it was close to his house, he would take the call, and so he did. And when he when he got there, he said he whispered a prayer, you know, please help me help this child. And I'm thankful that there are are policemen around who still have a real heart to actually serve the community. And there are there are lots of policemen who are still like that. So he went in, and sure enough, the house was wrecked. Uh, there was an 11-year-old. He had gone to many of the sinks, the bathtubs, and filled up water and was overflowing and flooding the floors. He was just ripping stuff out of the closets and pouring glue on the floor and taking a screwdriver and knocking big holes into the wall. And he had to, he had to find this child, a child when he saw that the police had come, he, he hid. And so when he when he finally uh, got to the child, he, he found out and started to investigate and find out what had happened. What had happened is he was away from the home, as he would often was. He would go over to a friend's house and would play Minecraft. And his mother had gotten tired, very tired of him not doing his homework, not doing his chores and all the things that he was supposed to do because of this Minecraft that had gripped him, uh, gripped him so much. So what she did, she turned the router off before he came home. So the child came home, and he went to continue his Minecraft playing, and when she would not allow him onto the internet, he had a withdrawal. And that manifestation that I told you of anger and aggression came out as it does in many children. And he had gotten to the point of aggression. 
And that's why he was tearing the house all to pieces. He had even threatened to kill himself because she would not turn the router on and let him get to the Internet. And so it, my friend Nigel Sergeant Dalton had no choice but to uh, make sure that he got to the hospital and be checked out because he had threatened suicide. And so you're starting to see uh, this tipping point where it's gone from just the tantrums over into the aggression. And it is global. I'm sitting here right now, Dana, staring at the photographs of the call that Sergeant Dalton made. And he had to take pictures of – he sent them to me. And it's absolutely frightening that an 11-year-old child could do this. But it's happening around the world. And so Australia, it, because of their supersaturation of technology – now, it's a, it's a large country in terms of landmass, but population-wise, about 24, 25 million people – they per capita have an enormous amount of technology, more cell phones I've heard than any other country on earth per capita per person. And so I spend quite a bit of time there, but they also have uh, a, a division of their police in the federal police that is just world class on tracking down the pedophiles. And so I'll just give you one anecdotal story that I can tell you. Um, Sergeant Dalton relates this story quite often when we give our talks. Uh, and I have been involved in some of these as well. But this girl, a 16-year-old girl, or somewhere around 16 years of age, was carrying on a conversation with someone. And that prefrontal cortex that we talked about earlier, not being able to make rational decisions, this conversation that she was having with someone on social media, she thought that it was a, a very good-looking uh, teenage boy. And um, and she eventually got scared when the boy said, I live in another city here in Australia, and I want to come and visit you. And so she had heard uh, one of the talks in the schools. She, uh, a brave thing, most kids would not do this. Occasionally they do. She took the computer to her mother, came clean. The mother took the computer down to the police station. And the police resumed the conversation with this alleged teenage male pretending to be her. So they organized for him to go ahead and fly into the into the town, the city where we were uh, working, and the police were there waiting on him. And when he showed up, he was actually not from anywhere where he said he was a 50-some-year-old man from Perth, Australia, that had come in to – he was preying on this you know teenage girl. So they arrested him. There are story after story after story of these sting operations that are going on, and it is absolutely frightening. And every parent – as I mentioned earlier, that I run into believes their child is the exception and they would never do anything like that. And so I'm thankful that there are police out there who actually care and are, and are on the cutting edge. On the digital cocaine DVD that you have, if the, the bonus section, uh, we shot that video out in Kansas City and we briefly collaborated with the Kansas City Police. And the context of that was sex trafficking. Now, the reason why I was on the panel and hosted it is because of uh, what is fueling the entire sex trafficking issue, and that is pornography. And so uh, on the DVD, we had one of the specialists there who works very heavily in the sex trafficking, uh, on that sex trafficking issue and the pornography and so forth and the sexting issues in the school. So I've been very privileged to work with law enforcement to track this down, but I would say the number one problem by far, would be that pornography issue. And as you have may already made mention, um, it, it is it, 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 the things that I said on that DVD, as shocking as they are, Dana, there are things that I, I did not say. And if, if I said it, I, I'm afraid people just would not believe me. But the problems are are much worse than what I've even let on. Wow. Um, you also mentioned Las Vegas in your presentation mm -hmm. yeah the t the top hubs in the u.s for sex trafficking would be kansas city and las vegas so where i in las vegas uh, one of the dual things that i do uh <laughs> i have a radio background like you deanna so i go out to the national association of broadcasters convention periodically I've been going out there for a number of years but while i'm out there i'm connected to quite a number of churches uh that host me to speak and so one of those uh, and schools as well to speak to the to the students. So, you know, they're the hub for a lot of they call it Sin City for a reason. And but there are a lot of great people in, in Las Vegas, by the way, uh, tremendous people. They they draw a clear distinction. But, what, you know, between what goes on on the strip and then in the suburbs around there. But, yeah, the problems are pervasive. And, of course, when you live that close to the sex trafficking capital, 
the children are particularly vulnerable because there are people there who are on overdrive trying to recruit the children. So I've done work out there and done seminars and spoken in, you know, to students to do some uh, – an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and that is so true. So that's our prayer that, that we can do some, some really key prevention work out there. Uh, and again, it was in Kansas City as well. So I've been privileged to go to these places, Deanna, but as you said, you shed some tears over the pornography, over the pornea. Uh, DVD series and being on the ground collecting this data and doing the research to author these things, I, I too uh, leave with a very heavy heart and have to escape and go on a vacation periodically just to get my my head clear because of what's going on. And we desperately need a, a spiritual renewal in this country because that's where our morality comes from. Of course, we need a political renewal as well where uh, our legislation reflects these things that will protect us instead of open the floodgates to just trash the country that we all dearly love. So I'm honored to be with you again. I keep saying that, but I'm just amazed with a message that I have that's so counterculture like this and to talk about these dark, dark things. I'm just amazed at the doors that God has opened to allow me to, to hopefully turn on a light in some hearts. Um, on your In your DVD presentation and also in the book, you talk about the amount of sleep that uh, that certain age group groups need to have in order to be healthy. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you also talk about that parents are taking their cell phones to, to the bedroom with them, uh, which in addition to the, uh, the EMFs that they shoot out, uh, but they're they're staying on their cell phones into the night. Their children are taking the cell phones, and and heaven only knows what these children are looking at, uh, unsupervised, uh, and the things that are available, and and look very uh, innocent. Uh, children can click on just so many things, a Disney character, and they can go to a. A, a porno site, and that is some that is often where they get their idea of what sex is, which which when you learn something as a child, it stays with you and it becomes your 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 vision of adulthood. You you remember those things. Your first impressions of of sex are now coming not from your parents and in a a normal healthy relationship but they're coming from people who and you talk about the various uh the various sexual uh oh the things that people do mm-hmm. which i had never heard of or imagined uh in my wildest nightmare and yet there are children uh and and preschoolers, mm-hmm. and first graders who are learning about what sex is from internet predators and people who are and and these children will remember those things more than they would if they learned it on their parents' knee. Uh, it's I it's, and it and it's happened so rapidly, Deanna. I mean, this is this has transpired since the 2006-2007 era when the iPhone put the Internet in our pocket. Society was breaking down, of course, over the last number of decades, but it took a, a massive nosedive because of that pornography issue. And what really started the whole Pornea series, I was contacted by the counseling department of that large organization and they were having children as young as 10 being brought in for porn addiction and they just did not know what to do about it so when i spoke in front of that large audience they actually asked me to show how the children obtain it and that's where i showed the youtube clip where they a child innocently went to barbie just went to the barbie section of youtube and there was full-on animated porn there with ken and barbie doing bdsm and then uh, you mentioned Disney. The child will be taken uh, to a Disney movie or they'll be allowed to watch a DVD. They'll, they're allowed to have the tablet in the bedroom. And they'll just simply Google in innocence. They will Google Disney wanting to continue the stories and to follow up. 
and the pornographers have used the characters such as Jasmine and Cinderella, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have made perfect replicas of all of these famous Disney characters doing full-on foul pornography and the children look at that and become very very confused but what it's designed to do obviously is to get them hooked wear down their defenses turn on that webcam and then next thing you know some 50 year old pervert has access to a little child and they had their images and everything else and this is what we find when i work with law enforcement uh it is rife and so that's what actually started the whole pornea series was this organization asking me to actually show from sites that parents think are sanitized and filtered and monitored which they clearly are to a degree but not to the degree that you would think where it does indeed become a gateway and so an entire series was born out of that but to your point about why there's these things where bestiality is very popular now. Sex with animals, it's popular. It's become normalized in some circles. You think, how did we get this far? How in the world did we get this far? Well, to the brain, when you start to get addicted to anything, you have to do more and more and more just to continue to feel it. With pornography, it has to become, you know, in plain language, dirtier or vile or more perverted because the brain only works one way when it comes to addiction. So let's say you start off having sex with a human. That is a level of excitement to the brain, to the hormones, etc. But once you go into the virtual, a human cannot stand up to that. And so if you're going to make love to a human, you cannot be aroused if you're addicted to porn unless you either bring porn into the bedroom or you at least conjure images of porn that you've seen in your mind in order to be stimulated. After a while, that doesn't work, so you have to continue down this path of perversity so that you shock the system to, in order to be stimulated, and you, you don't work back the other way until you completely detox. Now, the good news is you can detox, and you know we've got this movement around the world, of, and this is not a religious movement, a Christian movement, but you've got all of these 20-somethings who – it's called a no-fap movement where they're detoxing because they have erectile dysfunction because it, and it's not uh, it is not a blood flow issue it's a brain issue where they have been in pornography to the point where they cannot be stimulated with the human anymore and so they're breaking up their human relationships and so what they're doing is detoxing so they can then go back and have a relationship with the human so it's gotten that bad but that said, people will end up doing things that they swore they never would do before. They'll look at child porn. They'll get on the, the dark web and start to find child porn. And that is another massive problem that I've encountered with people. It's, it's, it's a growing trend of finding these extreme things on the dark web because the, the web that we all know and, and are operating on – uh, you know, culturally doesn't do it anymore. Even the porn that you find there is not strong enough. So you have to go for the things that are very illegal and extreme taboo stuff because the brain has built up such resistance. And that's where we are. It's a growing problem. And it's not just the adults that it's growing in. It's the teenagers as well. So it is a, a problem that I desire to see uh, uh, solutions to. And some of those solutions are going to involve the spiritual and there's a big anti-God movement, of course, in our country and other countries of the world, but it's going to involve detox centers, which, as we've discussed, we have a big problem because our Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders does not have an official diagnosis. They, they make a brief reference to Asia studying it, but we have no data, and they say we need to study it more. And I'm like, and what do you need to study? We have all the science. If we would just humble ourselves and, and realize that other countries can contribute to us and take their science, we could fix some of this problem right now and even legislatively. But we've got a lot of work to do, and I think starting these conversations and doing what we're doing here is a, it will go a long way. And I think some of the audience right now, Deanna, the light's going on, and I think a, just a flicker of hope is coming into members because they're thinking, you know, I, I, I think I know now why this depression is settled in on me. I think I know now why I'm so bored with people. I think I know now why my child has ADD and ADHD when this time two years ago it was never an issue. So I think programs like this, getting the conversation going, has a great – goes a long way in sparking some, some interest and some hope that there are solutions to this. Um. Uh, even getting back to TV, <clears throat> I, I hate to backtrack, but but I okay. noticed that when we got rid of our TV, and then uh, we we didn't have one for uh, seven years. Oh, I'll pick this up after the break. We'll be right Sounds back. Sounds good. Thank you.
Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then Common Core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. aroutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. AirOutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more. Plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to AirOutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at AirOutfitting.com. It starts with you and me, it starts with you and me, we all can be heroes if we take the lead, to change the bad to good, to live in harmony, it starts with you and me. All righty, we are back. Thank you for joining us. Our guest is Brad Huddleston. His website is bradhuddleston.com. Please visit the website. Look at all of the information that he has there. Buy his book. Uh, look at the um, Bornea, the, A Global Tragedy. It's a DVD program. Um, anyway, we, we'd gotten rid of our TV, and seven years later, Somehow the children had docked us into into getting one because, gosh, everybody at school had one. And so we, we caved in. And there was such a difference in the quality of the programming. I, I, was, I was kind of shocked uh, because um, TV started out very, um, very gentle, you know, uh, the parents slept in separate beds and there was no sex and and now you have sexual scenes on TV which really uh, is very it's bad these these scenes should not be part of 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 television rape scenes should not be shown on TV because well because we're it's supposed to be entertainment it's not supposed to be well, it's programming. It is programming. Now, um, 
we were talking about pornography and we think, or at least many people think, oh, that's just something that guys do. And there's not that many people probably that are involved in pornography. Gosh, right? Hmm. Think again. Uh Wrong. That's right. Listen, there was a, I'm going to be keynoting at a conference, a a key conference uh, in Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, later this month. And it's an organization uh, that encompasses two organizations, Proven Men and and Now Proven Women. And the reason uh, they had to develop Proven Women is because the women have uh, very, very quickly nearly caught up with how many men are looking at pornography. And so... Uh, there's a lot of science that needs to be done. I would like to see some brain scanning done on the females like there have been on the males because we are wired differently. Uh, Despite what people may tell you, you can't just identify as another sex or whatever, and your brain's just going to shift with you. We're different, and uh, it's just a physiological fact. So a lot of unknowns with that subject. But to your point, um, the pornography issue is so uh, tenuous because we have a lot of it is funded um our lobbyists in washington dc it's it's sort of like uh you 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 attack that and you're going to be attacked back there's so much money being poured into washington dc because of that and again i'm all for liberties and freedoms but deanna there there has to be a line you know there's a story i learned when i took physics in college there's a standard of the meter stick, for example, in a case somewhere, I think, in Paris, such that if all of the meter sticks, like a yardstick within the metric system, if the if all of them disappeared uh, or the measurements got off, you could go to the standard and go to this one meter stick that is guaranteed to be in exactly one meter. You can cut more meter sticks and know that your measurements are exact. The problem is the standards of morality has been eroded away by the left in our country. We know that, the progressives in particular. And so through political correctness and so forth, we, we used to have a universal – even people who didn't believe in God had a great respect for life, uh, for property, for people's uh, individual rights where you don't harm other people. Well, all of that is gone, and we're doing what is right in our own eyes. And so when it comes to the pornography issue – it is, in a sense, protected. It's one of those things where uh, the organization, for example, that I'm going to be speaking for, Proven Men, they they contracted the Barner Research Group to find out how many churched men and pastors and youth pastors are looking at pornography. And these stats are about five years old now, and I think they're much worse. But let's just go back to what we do know. In our country, in evangelical Christian churches, 72% of the men admitted to struggling with pornography at some level and about 54% of the U.S. pastors. And so other research that I've been involved with, uh, if if a child, for example, male and female, has an Internet-connected device that they're allowed to keep in their bedroom, 100% have at least been exposed to porn if they're not regularly looking at it. So the problem, I did a research project in South Africa two years ago called the blesser blessy phenomena, which is their way of saying sugar daddy, sugar mama, where a, a young, most often a young girl gets involved with a 75-year-old man. He provides all of these material goods for her in exchange for sex. We found in these focus groups that we did between the ages of 17 and 24, 100% of the participants in that age group, male and female, were addicted to porn. And what shocked us is that it had normalized. There was was no apprehension to talk about it. It was normal conversation. It was just part of what they do, which reflects, if you look at the modern sitcoms on our television, pornography is just uh, just on the airplanes that I fly around the world. A constant reference is being made to it. And so it's a massive problem with no end in sight outside of a spiritual awakening, I believe. Wow. Oh, my goodness. All righty. We will be right back. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org.
The reviews for Extendivite are amazing. Here are some from Amazon by Christine. Great for heart palpitations. By Ann. Before I started using this product, every afternoon, my ankles and my hands would be swollen. That doesn't happen anymore. So if that part of their advertising is true, I have to assume that the rest of it is also. Not to mention that when I had my yearly blood test, only a few weeks after beginning to use this product, my cholesterol had dropped over 30 points. I'm going to continue to take it. By Croc. I love this product. It really works. By Brad. Works great. Thank you. Tell us your story. Get your Extendivite today. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. OMG, people are jumping on board to the Life Change Tea Regiment. Brew, steep, and drink for a gentle, taste great cleanse. It's changing how they feel. See what everybody's talking about. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea aids in digestive slowdown and helps people get moving down a healthy path. We won't make claims. We'll just let you decide. Experience is much better than a commercial anyway. If you want results, log on to GetTheTea.com and purchase your super strength cleansing tea. You won't be disappointed. And if you're looking for some mind-body suggestions, go to YouTube and punch in the search bar, Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. Put power into your health now. So, get the tea.com. that's get the tea.com for Super Strength Tea, and YouTube, Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now for valuable suggestions. Get the tea.com. the tea that makes you go. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. We are back. Uh, we were talking about um, uh, church leaders who were involved in in pornography, and the the numbers are staggering. And do you feel that that uh, church leaders are especially targeted uh, by some entity to participate in? pornography or to become addicted to pornography are they targeted you think because that certainly uh, would be one way of totally destroying um, a culture that would promote now, I, just living it's, exactly I, you know the Catholic Church has had a terrible problem and it's you know, I, I don't think the the Protestant churches can point a finger anymore uh, and say, "Well, look at them." Um, you know, their problem has been predominantly pedophilia, but sin is sin, and pornography is pornography. Uh, the Protestant evangelical church, yes, I absolutely do think they're targeted, not by the industry themselves. They don't really need to target anybody. They have such uh, a potent drug on their hands that. They just dangle it and people take it. But absolutely, spiritually speaking, they're targeted. Uh, there's no question because the more lives that are ruined, the happier the devil is. Uh, but even aside from that, um, it doesn't just take a, a, a dark entity. It, 
even if you don't believe in that, I mean, there's just human flesh. We, we like that. And so we just don't have moral restraint anymore. And but but I would submit to this audience that, uh, you know, the, the restraining factor has to come from without not from within. We don't have enough power from within to control these things. The appetite that we develop through addiction and through these things is just so powerful. You, it's like AA. They rely on a higher power. Now, I call him Jesus, but be that as it may, AA is still very successful just using the higher power. We definitely need a, a, a source of strength outside of it. The numbers are, are getting worse by the day and the genres of porn. I mean, Dan, I don't know how explicit I'm, I can be, so feel free to stop me at any Yeah, moment. go ahead. Be explicit. Well, there are uh, – I'm thinking of a headline. You know, we have the USA Today in our country as a national newspaper. In Australia, it's called The Australian. And I stick with just the mainstream media for headlines because I'm afraid if I, if I use something from the Internet itself, just by the Internet, people think I'm being conspiratorial, which I'm not. But basically, one of the big problems that they're having down there, and it's around the world, but they just talk about it more openly than we do, the, the general practitioners are screaming that the children, as young as 12 and 13, are being brought in having to have surgeries for repair of, of anal, vaginal, and throat tearing because they're mimicking what they're seeing in pornography, inserting oversized objects into themselves you know, doing what they're seeing on the screen. And, of course, after they do it, they realize all of that was a facade, and it's not as it really appears. And so they end up tearing their little vaginas, their anuses, and so forth, and they end up having to go in for surgery. And this stuff is making the mainstream news in Australia. And we don't talk about it here, but I, I'd be willing to bet that it's happening here as well because these stats are the same around the world in terms of what people are looking at, how young they're looking at. I mean, the average age that a child gets their first smartphone is between 8 and 10. Now, that's an average. Some are getting it much younger than that, some a little bit older, but the average is 8, and that's when they're falling into these things. And so they end up, uh, you know, mimicking what they do, and so they're looking at bestiality. They're looking at things that when I was growing up, I saw pornography, but it was with the magazine that had the brown paper wrapper, and it, it was very hard to get. I'm not proud that I looked at it, but I did. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. What I can tell you is the porn of today is nothing, nothing, even close to what it was when we were growing up, and the, these children's first impressions are of humans having sex with animals it is of very large penises being inserted in very small orifices and women who are being drugged so that they can handle that. They're saying, I like this. I like this on camera when, in fact, they've been drugged. We know that there are doctors in the San Fernando Valley, ex for example, who are giving these painkillers to the sex performers so that they can endure it. But afterwards, the suicide rate is horrific. They also have doctors that they go to out there to be repaired. And they end up having prolapse of the organs and because after a while they cannot hold their urine, they can't hold their, their bowel movements, and so they end up wearing adult diapers. That's the side that I wrote about in the dark side of technology that got me so much pushback saying you need to tone that down. And I'm like, you know what? I actually care about people. I actually like the human race. I actually think that we should not do these things. And those who have done it, there's grace for them to, they need to stop though. We call that repentance, but you know, we need to be a force to help people get out of it and escape from this madness uh, that the pornography industry is bringing. And now it's gotten down from the time I wrote the dark side of technology is when the adults were doing these things and having their repairs done with their anal prolapses and all of that. Now you're finding 12 and 13 year old children being brought in for the exact same thing. And at some point, we just, I, I don't know, I, I'm screaming as loudly as I can, Dan, and thanks for joining me in this fight. Uh, I, I'm amazed that these doors keep opening for me to talk this explicitly, and I'm very uncomfortable doing it. I wasn't raised to talk like this, but I feel like as a last-ditch effort, I'll just call a spade a spade. And then again, the motive is because I actually care about people and want to see them helped. Um. <clears throat> What the Internet has done, now it used to be, I, as I understand it, that people could visit the back, the back rooms of 
bookshops or video shops or something to get uh, videos that dealt with with pornography and and I think that that people would never want their neighbor to see them going in one of these back rooms but now the internet is a back room without any observers so anybody can go on the internet and find whatever they want you now have organizations that are promoting sex between adults and children and saying it's it's perfectly normal i don't remember what what they call that organization is it uh, nambla yes yes that's it mm-hmm. yep uh which which is terrible i don't know who's who's ever doing that i'd be strung up um amen and, and you talk about viagra which rhymes with niagara uh which is a, an interesting concept but um I, I i'm just amazed so so we've gone from the back room where nobody wants to be seen to now you can now anybody including three and four year old children can access this stuff whether by accident or on purpose right in their own homes right in their own bedrooms and it doesn't necess- it doesn't deal with just men anymore it's women it's children it's it's the entire population that is uh is victimized by uh this group it's it's terrible and i have talked with people who who have had their children uh snatched uh into uh into pornography they uh it's i've interviewed people uh whose children have disappeared uh and i also posted uh in the um, chat room just a few moments ago about nancy schaefer who was um who was in in the senate i believe she was in the senate or the, um that um she was fighting <clears throat> corruption in the uh cps uh and she was suicided both she and her husband uh were killed uh because she um she was she said well you know they're using uh the child protective services uh to traffic children and uh she was a, a georgia senator and um she was talking about state sponsored kidnappings and uh she was she was murdered in uh, march of 2010 and uh so people have a reticence about talking about these things and so i applaud you for having the courage to to talk about this to discuss it and to write about it to alert others to what is going on i i am just i I, it's an honor to to have you on the program and uh thank you for your courage and and your you just you're not going to stop you're persistent i and you're talking enough to enough people that uh you're you're going to make a huge impact i i just hope that that pe- more people will listen and i'm so grateful that you're going to talk to the the children in their schools and maybe they won't listen to their parents but maybe they'll listen to you and and certainly certainly there are children who must must be aware that there's something wrong that there's they don't feel the same as they used to and they're suffering from anxiety and anger. Uh, and there's also been ch- uh, ch- the cyberbullying, where um, people have actually committed suicide because of what what people have done. Uh, cyber bull- it's, it's more than just about sex. It's about using uh, this technology to uh, to go after people in a very detrimental negative horrible way uh because they feel oh well i'm kind of invisible no one knows who i am um so they can pretty much do do what their conscious conscience allows them to do and some people 
are past feeling. They they no longer have a conscience, uh, and they just do what is this. right in their own eyes. Yes. And, and Deanna, uh, you know, not only do I do the science, and I'm privileged to do the research, but you know, I'm a minister as well, and so I. I see both sides, and it's been a real privilege for me to be able to research and get some good solid numbers or, you know, have access to them and other people's work. But uh, the solution still, you know, boils down to people need love and not the kind of love that pornography claims as love, but the unconditional grace that says, you know what, I've made an absolute mess of my life. And I would just say to this audience, you've been listening and you're you're thinking – you know what, I've looked at this stuff or I've participated in this and that and this and that. There's hope for you and there's grace through through Jesus. And I, I'm not just a religious fanatic, as some people would, would claim. Um, I have been the recipient of much grace because in my past I haven't been perfect either. So I, I come with no judgment whatsoever, just a hand up. And uh, that that is really my my core message is the solution to all of this mess. We know, I think, intuitively that there is a mess, but I lose sleep over the children. I was uh, one of the things I deal with, Deanna, is the issue of self harm and cutting. And once a child has been bullied and they get a digitally addicted, you will find these uh, horrific, horrific numbers of children who are taking. Knives, scissors, glass, razors, you name it, and they're cutting themselves. And in some cases, they burn themselves. And so I give a whole talk neurobiologically, neuropsychologically, why they do that. But I was in this big audience in Africa, but it doesn't matter if it's Africa or where it is. I had a, I had a room, a big auditorium full of students last week. And I had them stand up for spiritual renewal and salvation, that sort of thing. But then I said, I want you to close your eyes. How many of you are self-harmers? I want you to stand up. And I wept, Deanna, at the sheer number, and it's growing everywhere I go around the world, children who cut themselves. And the next day, a girl came up and showed me her cuts. They do it very frequently. And you can see the old wounds that have healed over. You can see the new ones and the fresh cuts that have opened up. And they they cut sometimes in places where it's inappropriate for them to show me. But I'll ask them a question. Are you bleeding? Is it infected? Because then it'll tell me how bad the brain has gotten with this addiction. And then we always get them or seek to get them help. So these problems are spiraling out of control. And I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the success stories. Because if people want help. It, it is available, and it's the shows like this, Deanna. You said it's an honor for me to be on your show. The honor's mine, and thank you again for helping me. I, I lose sleep and, and shed tears as well because I stu- still care. And, it, and if I may just be so bold as to mention, too, I started a podcast about three weeks ago and um, to help get this word out as if I have time to do it. But it was just something in my prayer time I felt like for a long period of time I just needed to do. So if you think I hate technology, please know that I'm sitting in my own studio right now talking to you through Skype, and I've got a big microphone and all that sort of stuff. But there is a great use, and one of those great uses is is this network that we're on right here, using the technology to get our message out. Because as you, the ads have been saying, we're being banned more and more through the mainstream media. But I'm thank, I thank God for it. But my podcast, if you just go to bradhuddleston.com, there's a link right up at the top where you can subscribe and all the usual channels. And what I've been doing is putting out things just like this uh, and updated scientific things that come out, interviews that I'm doing with other people, research that I'm privy to in an effort to, to shed some light on this to get the word out. so And that's free of charge, of course. So uh, I'm with you in this in this media battle as well, Deanna. And so I can't thank you enough. The honor is mine to be on your program. Uh, now, what, what specifically, uh, why do children cut themselves? Well, it, it's, there are, the list as to why they do it is long, but let me give you the top three. The top three reasons they do it is because the home is in chaos, and so their little brains cannot handle the stress with all the swearing, the the verbal abuse, the physical abuse, all that stuff that goes on in the homes these days, and a negative cascade of chemical reactions will flow through their system, leaving them sometimes with post-traumatic stress disorder, which then leads to depression, anxiety disorders, 
all of those things that we've been talking about. Basically, their world is in chaos and they have no peace. The other one is digital addiction. They have numbed themselves and hedonically through becoming digitally addicted. And so what they do, they discover cutting. They share it with each other. It's it's a very common thing that they do. It's a coping mechanism such that when they harm themselves, whether it be through cutting, that's the predominant way they do it. They also will burn. The latest thing that they've been doing is taking an aerosol can and putting the nozzle right onto their skin, holding the button and burning themselves. And what uh. happens what happens physiologically, that hurts, but if they wait just a few minutes, endorphins are released and it makes them feel peaceful, calm and in control and it feels good and that's why they do it. Wow. Okay, we'll be right back. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Homeowners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue and your property can be restored to you, and your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855-2-KEEP-IT-TODAY. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. We are back with our guest, Brad Huddleston, and his website is bradhuddleston.com. And be sure and click uh, on the links right at the top, and you will see that, uh, let's see, the fourth one down says podcast, and he was just talking about uh, doing a podcast, which I hope that you will all uh, listen to so that you can learn more about this uh, this situation um, and the fact that that children uh, people are harming themselves just just 
Oh, gosh. They're desperate to feel something, Deanna. They they have overstimulated themselves through the digital technology. They've become anhedonic or numb. So they can't get the dopamine in, and what they do is trick endorphins. Now, I exercise regularly as I'm getting older, and if I want to continue running around the planet, I've had to clean up my diet and exercise. And that's a great way to get stress relief because those endorphins uh, get released, and then the negative stress hormones get burned up. But with children, most of them are very sedentary. They're sitting in front of screens all the time. They've gained weight. So they're not burning off the bad stuff. And so these endorphins do make them feel peaceful and calm. But the problem is it just adds to a soup. Uh, It's a chemical imbalance. And so it doesn't last. But they're also extremely addictive, these endorphins uh, are. And so over time, the body builds up resistance to the endorphins, and they end up having to cut more often. And so you'll see the lines go up their legs, up their arms. They'll cut, uh, especially uh, up on their upper part of their thighs where the clothes will cover it so the parents don't see it. There are, The last I checked, there were I think it was like 400 websites dedicated to self-harm, and they would teach children how to keep the wounds clean, how to hide it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I've written about this, and I'm with these children. I have photos. Of, you know, a mom gave me a picture not long ago of her child, and it's horrific uh, what's going on, and it just breaks your heart. They're desperate to feel, and they're desperate to feel peace. And so that's why I write about detox. I'm writing about digital rehab, and I also talk about the Prince of Peace, who is Jesus, but – Because there's a spiritual component that we cannot neglect. But just medically speaking, we have a huge, huge need. And the doctors doctors will tell you how many children are coming through with with patients, young patients who are harming themselves. And Deanna, I have no stats for this, but I believe, I believe, now this is not something I can prove uh, like some of the other things that we've done research on. But I think if we were to do a research project, I think we would find that the self-harm has jumped into the millennials, that it's getting – the demographic is getting older and older. Uh, But I can't say for sure, but with the teenagers, it's out of control. When I take a show of hands in any auditorium around the world in schools, how many of you – and I don't ask them if if they are cutting because I tell them I came here not to embarrass you. I actually care about you. How many of you know someone else outside of this school who self-harms? You'll get 80, 75 to 80 percent of the hands go up. And um, and some of those children know the same kids who are cutting, but I would estimate if I would have asked that question five years ago, it would only have been 25%. And so you're just seeing a spike in all of these social problems and the self-harm problems, the pornography problem, they're all interrelated. It's all a synergistic effect. And so I'm, con- you know, I'm committed to continue to write about this and get answers and do research and uh, stay in the media and keep the conversation alive. And this is, these are people who will be in charge of the future of this country. What? Oh my gosh, it it looks very uh, bleak. Yeah, pretty bleak. It does. But we, but we have to have faith. We have to believe that something has to happen. Something has to occur that will will turn it around. Um, we've seen so many disastrous things occur in the country, uh, the, the production being shipped offshore so that there's less jobs and less of, of so many things. It's, uh, this country is in very sad shape in so many respects. Oh my gosh. We, we will take calls in the next hour at 800 800- 313-9443. Be right back. It happens more often than we can imagine. In my case, I was sitting at home, and out of nowhere, I just started feeling uncomfortable. Then it got worse, and I started perspiring. I tried to ignore it, but I waited too long. The chest pain came as we were driving to the hospital emergency. I felt my life clock begin to tick. I barely survived. There was lots of damage done to my heart. What do I do now? I was lucky. I took a leap of faith and tried a seven-herb formula with hot garlic, cayenne, and more. 
You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Because you can handle the truth. Brad Huddleston. His website is Brad Huddleston. That's H U D D L E S T O N. He is the author of Digital Cocaine, which uh, people just, uh, you just need to, to buy this book. Uh, he talks about video gaming, which, uh, even, okay, even the video gaming, okay, that's. That's something that we really haven't uh, haven't talked about. We've talked about the the predatory sexual kinds of things, but the video gaming uh, that is something that consumes an incredible amount of time. And you covered that in chapter four of your book. and And the name of the book, of course, is Digital Cocaine. And then he also wrote The Dark Side of Technology, which is being revamped, and he has. The DVD program, Pornia, a global tragedy. Global, okay? Global. Not just here in the United States. It's global. So anyway, we will take your calls at 800-313-9443. What about this video gaming? Yeah, the average age of a video gamer, as I mentioned earlier, Deanna, is 35. I think last year it was 37. Um, it, it it's always in the 30s, so that's the average. And you're seeing marriages breaking up. You're seeing mar- marriages negatively affected. And we encounter this everywhere we go. And you'll see dads who are uh, bringing their children into it and saying, you know, it's our time to bond. But from a brain perspective, uh, it's it's like they're doing lines of cocaine with their children. And that sounds extreme. That sounds horrific. But this is coming from brain scanning technology such as SPECT and fMRIs. And you have to think properly about these issues if you're going to live properly. So the video video gaming also comes with it, porn addiction. There's a statistical correlation if you're a hardcore video gamer. Now, look, people define that differently. They'll say, I don't play that much. But if you're playing more than an hour a day, you're a hardcore gamer because you have effectively snorted a line of coke in terms of how much dopamine is produced. And it's just irrefutable what these brain scans look like. And it, before the brain scanning technology, when I would deal with this from a uh, psych- psychological point of view, they would just brush me off and get angry and that was about it. But when the scans started to come out, about the only thing these 35-year-old gamers can do is get angry. And what I tell them is, you know, you have wasted about 12 years of your life, at least, gaming. The, the sheer amount of time you have wasted. Oh, my gosh. And, well, what I mean by that is they've been gaming an average of 12 years. And so that's an average. They have wasted years, literally, of their of their lives. I didn't mean to say they've. there's no number that I know that say 12 years, but it is in the years. Right, incrementally, it is in years. Yes. yes. And so they, their whole world is wrapped up in that, and it's affected their careers. They may not even be in the, the correct career um, because they haven't taken time to utilize what God has put in them in terms of their giftings and their academic abilities or their trade abilities, whatever it may be, because they've just gamed for hours on end. And work is just something they have to do just to support support at a bare minimum their family and what i tell these guys because you know i'm a guy can and i can speak to a guy I say look you know your full-time job uh if you're married and have children your full-time job is to provide for your family and to raise your children in the nurture and the admonition of the lord you don't have you know 20 hours a week to be gaming i mean you got a, a family in need here there's a country falling apart that needs your attention um, all of this sort of stuff. And what are you doing? You're you're a 35-year-old child gaming. Now, I talk pretty straight to them. So far, I haven't been beat up by anyone, thank God. But I just talk straight. I've gotten to the point where I'm screaming. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous. And on top of that, they're addicted to porn. And the poor wife is 
you know, so neglected and the children are so neglected or they're just been turned loose with a device because the device gets them addicted and they're out of the parent's hair. And this is representative of about every American household now. And even, in, as I mentioned earlier, in developing countries, they may not have food, but you can be guaranteed of three things, Deanna. They've got a phone, a satellite dish, and probably a video game console. Wow. And, and parents have been programmed to think that the best schools that they can get their children into are the ones that provide all this technology. And that's not what Steve Jobs or Bill Gates thought. Right. Uh, Bill, we talked about Steve Jobs earlier, but Bill Gates only allowed his daughter 45 minutes a day technology time. 45 minutes, that's all she was allowed. And he owns Microsoft. And so if you think they are using the latest and greatest technologies for their children, think again. Now, I did read an article where he, he would uh, very under close supervision, I suppose, but he was very strict. I do know that he would allow a little extra time if it were educational, genuine, you know, research and that sort of thing. But in terms of the entertainment side of technology, where most of this is occurring, 45 minutes a day. And Deanna, let me say there is a good side of technology, but no one has ever come to me and said, oh my goodness, I am, help me, I'm so addicted to Excel. <laughs> I'm, I'm so addicted to Word. And yet, these are the things that are very helpful. What you and I are doing here is very helpful. Right. The, the things that are killing us are the Netflix binging, and that word binging is used for a very good reason. It's a drug term. It is the video gaming. It's the pornography. So I, I want this audience to, to know I did not renounce my computer science degree when I learned all of this about neuroscience from neuroscience. I haven't renounced my computer science degree, but I will say it's the entertainment side of things that's creating – the majority of the problems and no one has ever said to me you know oh i take my gps to bed i find the voice so soothing i sleep better with it but yeah the the i say use the gps it may even prevent some arguments in your marriage but uh you know it's a good use of the technology podcasting is a good use of the technology but the pornography the video gaming the social media at the rates that we're using it's killing us especially with children and I, and I also feel I really need to mention something, Deanna. Uh, we didn't – if I could regress just a little bit. Yes. Autistic children and children who are on a scale, a spectrum of being aspergis, um, psychologists will prescribe tablets often to help with their attention deficits because they're extreme. Their, their brains are hyperwired. From a neuro, and, and these are not evil people who prescribe, by the way, these tablets, because on the surface it does seem that it's giving them focus. And indeed, there have been apps created that for the first time, autistic children have been able to communicate with their parents. And I would never call that bad. But I will say, once their eyes lock onto that screen, the clock starts ticking because the content doesn't matter, even if it's an, an app that allows them to communicate. The, 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 the reality is, it is twice as bad, if not more, for an autistic and an Asperger's child to look oh. at a, vi a screen and a video game. Psychologists are not bad for prescribing them, but a neuropsychologist who would combine the brain science and the scanning with the psychology would most often view this very, very differently than from someone who's just looking at it from an emotional, psychological point of view. I'm not trying to start a fight or put the industries down or the, those professions down. I hope you hear my heart in this. No, I, I agree. Uh, I'm just saying that, that now that we have the scanning technology, do not in any way, shape, or form use those tablet therapies for autistic and Asperger's children. Worst thing in the world you can do for them. And you need to find an analog equivalent, which would be the same therapies but in a non-digital fashion and slow that brain down and get them in a totally different environment than in a virtual environment. And I just feel to say that to parents because they're parents who have children, my heart really goes out to them, whose children are autistic and they're on a, a spectrum of being Asperger's. They're desperate, Deanna. There's children 
can be so out of control and the parents just get so desperate for peace of mind. I understand why they would hand them a tablet, but you've got to find help in a different way. Uh, those poor children, it sets their brain on fire. I mean, the brain scans of a child, for example, who has autism are just, they look like Christmas trees. It's too much activity to begin with, much less add digital stimulation to it to compound that problem even even more. So I didn't say that to scare or to make parents who have autistic children or Asperger's children very similar uh, to feel guilty or condemned. I'm trying to offer some help here. Right. Oh, gosh. You brought up Netflix. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, People now uh, on the Internet, uh, they use YouTube a lot. Mm-hmm. Instead, instead of picking up a book, they watch a YouTube video which uh, does not have any citations about where the information comes from, and they think that they're well versed in in many subjects because they've watched a YouTube video, and it's it's really a very um, selective information. Uh, as you and as I've said, with no citations, no mm-hmm. resources, nothing that you could could verify. But anyway, um, uh, we do have a caller, uh, John in Texas. John, welcome. Well, thank you. I'm. I have a question. Have you ever read the an early? There's an early pioneer into this. Was name was Marie Wynn. Do you know of her? I do not. Dana, do you? No. She wrote a book, and first published in 1977, called The Plug-In Drug. Oh, that sounds interesting. Oh, uh, was it about television? Uh, yes, yeah, television, and it was republished in 1985, and an expanded edition called The Plug, uh, 25 years after the plug, in 2002. Uh, it was about, uh, it added on to it only television but video games and computers. Ah. I'm familiar with a different author, but he's male. But go on. Well, she said that um, she was one of the, er, saying at this time, most of what was of the complaints about television or what discussion back then, which was, you know, she was from the perspective of the, uh, the, the 1960s into the mid-1970s was content. She, in 1976-77, was saying that the medium itself was dangerous. That the way it inter- interacted, and she used a lot of anecdotal te- testimony as well, there was uh, not that much um, empirical science on it, in fact, there wasn't. There wasn't another book called uh, "Endangered Minds," written by a Janet M. Healy. It was published in 1990. That did cite there was a a study done in 1967 with, that you know used out it measured people's brain, uh, children's and people's brain waves when they're watching television. Done in 1967 as well. Um. Because even up till 1990, I don't think there was much uh, empirical or systematic scientific study of the effect of tell of the actual uh, physiological effects. But apparently, what she, what Marie Wynn had concluded all the way back in 1960, 1977, was that, and I, I've read the 1985 version of her book. I don't remember that um, uh, that. Television was close that the amount of television or the saturation of television, which was rap, which occurred very rapidly after uh, between 1948 and 1952, particularly uh, when there was this rush to build all these stations. According to her, to her that. It, uh, it that the decline in verbal SAT scores followed uh, the increased the percentage of homes that had television in them, starting in the 
and from 1963 or 62 or 63 onward, and it it, it after about it reached a saturation point back in about the 19 about 1980, the decline leveled out, it flattened, it stopped once it reached the saturation point. From a scientific perspective, I can tell you, I have a friend, uh, Dr. Lilith Mendez in Sri Lanka. He's done work with screens, particularly high-resolution screens. When you start talking about HD, 4K, soon to be 8K, but 4K, the actual photons uh, coming off of the screen, particularly from animation cartoons in children, is particularly lethal for their brains. So it doesn't matter if it's... a uh, you know, if it's Disney or something just innocent, it has nothing to do with the contents. Uh, physically, uh, it is it is very bad for them. It is hyper stimulating at a level that old television just could not, you know, hold a candle to. So, Dr. Mendez has done some work. I've heard him lecture on this, and so yes, just physically speaking, for a child particularly animations are deadly for quite a number of reasons i do remember him talking about it's not my area of expertise but i do remember talking about just on a a physiological level the photons which is light it's it's a physical matter going into the brain stimulating it and bouncing around and so uh and he was remarking that as the resolution and the pixel numbers increase our brains just have not adapted to that level of resolution, which is stimulation, translates stimulation. Um, Our brains have not adapted to that, and so the problem is just going to get exponentially worse. The younger you are, the worse it's going to be. Also, the type of light that comes out of a, a cathode ray tube or a, or a LED screen is not what you find in the natural world mostly. Mostly what you're... What you're adapted to, to function into function in is reflected light, correct? Well, again, some of those areas of study are not my area of expertise, so I rely on some colleagues for that. And I've told you about all I know. Um, and I, I'm not, just before I go, Janet Healy in 1990, in their 1990 book, Endangered Mind, she said that there was a study done by an advertising firm in 1967 in which they, uh, you know, went, how they used to monitor people. They did the EK, e, uh, ECG, E-E-G. ECC, ECGs, the encephalocardia, the encephalo, the encephalograms. Encephalo, and they would yes. measure you know, the alpha waves and the beta right. waves and the. Yep. That's well, ENG. Yep. they were trying to, this advertising firm was trying to find out uh, the best way to create an, to create commercials that would uh, manipulate people on a subconscious level to get them to buy things. But what they, the result was from the study was something that they hadn't planned on. It seems that what they found out that, for one thing, it stimulated that Watching the television did a lot of stimulation of alpha waves, and that was a 1967 type of situation, and uh, which of course are associated with sleep. Um, what they ultimately concluded was, you know, and they, were, they were trying to, uh, I think, they were trying to make uh, children's the stuff that was trying to sell things to children. But what they found out was was that what television in 1967 at least was, could do was that it it put the brain into a hypnotic, non-learning state, and that they recommended that it should be either severely curtailed or even totally eliminated until the foundations of learning had been firmly established. And now we're, what we find is that there's no question that when a child is scrolling through uh, on an iPad or some other tablet, Android tablet or a phone, and it looks amazing how that child can intuitively, without any instruction manual, pick that thing up and navigate into areas that parents never could. 
that child is not actually learning at a certain point. They may be at first. Cognition always deteriorates. That child is being chemically mesmerized by dopamine and other stimulating chemicals because of hyperstimulation. Wow. Whoa. Okay. We'll be right back in three minutes. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge and knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. Aroutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. AirOutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more. Plus mag full clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to AirOutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at AirOutfitting.com. It starts with you and me. It starts with you and me. We all can be heroes if we take the lead to change the bad to good, to live in harmony. It starts with you and me. All right, we are back. We are back. Thank you so much. Our guest is Brad Huddleston. His website is bradhuddleston.com. He is the author of Digital Cocaine, as well as The Dark Side of Technology. Uh, He's got a DVD program, Pornea, A Global Tragedy. Please visit his website. And uh, thank you, John, for your phone call. You raised some very interesting questions. subjects and uh, uh, I was thinking as you were talking uh, with radio uh, people could interact they could imagine uh, what they were listening to but with TV you were just simply a recipient there was no interaction with TV so anyway thank you for your phone call John and uh, 
we do have some other calls. Do you want to comment any further on what John was saying? I, I think uh, I think he was spot on, and I just want to thank John as well. I, again, some of those technical areas about what it's doing to the brain, uh, and in some of those areas, I'm not uh, in the older days, I should say, not very well versed. But in the newer age, with the digital technology, that's where I come in. I think it can hopefully be helpful to people. But John did raise some very good points. Absolutely. All righty, let's take Mark in Louisiana. Mark? Yes, uh, g- good afternoon. I, uh, this information is absolutely shocking. I just had no idea of any of this taking place. I think every, every uh, parent should have a copy of this, read this copy, you, you know, this book. Uh, it, it's I just agree. unbelievable what's taking place. Now, I have a few questions because simply because I'm curious. Uh, talking about pornography, I assume that uh, the people that are addicted are probably 99% or better males. Is that correct? It used to be, Mark. Uh, that has changed. I have a colleague uh, at the University of South Africa, and I was uh, in conversation with someone in Sydney, Australia, where I was uh, speaking, who's a psychologist, both specializing in these areas of pornography. And while I don't have the last firm number that I can give you, it was about 55% of the women are now addicted to porn. That That's a firm number, but that stat is a bit old. I would estimate, and this is, I want to be very clear, 55% is a research number. What I'm about to say is anecdotal. I would estimate, and two other experts in this field agree, it is upwards of 80% now. And that is evidenced by something I mentioned earlier in the program where an organization here in the states, particularly in my state of Virginia, uh, in Lynchburg, Virginia, they have an organization called Proven Men. It's all about sexual wholeness and helping people who have porn addiction. The problem has gotten so bad amongst the women that they have now opened up another organization called Proven Women. So it, I would really would go out on a limb to tell you concretely it is way above 55 percent now so it it used to be a male problem with only about four percent female we know it's jumped to over 50 percent i would estimate 80 and then for the younger demographic if they have an internet connected device in their bedroom that they're allowed to keep overnight i would estimate 100 percent male and female addicted wow that is just uh, it, it's just to it's hard really to believe, hard to believe. I know it I know mm-hmm. you're you're uh you're telling the truth, but it it's, it's just so hard to you know, to believe. It's, and Mark, it's not hard for the kids in that demographic to believe. It's only those who are the millennials and above who have the hard time. And and you can understand why. It was just not we didn't grow up with the pervasiveness that they did. It was not normalized in our culture. There was a shame attached to it. It was a hidden thing. But you have to understand in in the context of the millennials down, it is, you know, it's been ever since the TV show Friends, and that thing was out a long time ago, it was normalized then in just in casual conversation. And, and so things have changed to a degree that, that those of us our age just can't hardly get our head around. The only reason why I have my head around it is because I'm on the ground with these kids throughout the year in various countries and working with various organizations doing research, and I still can't hardly believe what they tell me sometimes. But the numbers are the numbers, and I've been as honest and as transparent as possible. So you raise a good issue, Mark, and I, I concur. It's hard to believe, but I submit to you that I'm telling you the truth. Yes, no, I, I, I believe you. I really, really do. And uh, I think uh, every parent, I, you know, I hate to say it again, but or maybe I don't. I love to say it again, but this <laughs> is a must-have book. Well, thank Absolutely. You. you know, people have to, you know, watch over their kids. It has to be done. And, Mark, I would say, don't forget, the average age of a video gamer and porn addict is 35. This is not a kid problem primarily. It's a, it's a parent problem primarily, and so it's going to have to start with the parents dealing with that addiction because they have to lead by example. You cannot, with this modern group of Generation Z, tell them, look, don't do as I do, do as I say. They're not going to fall for that. 
And so we put all this emphasis on the children because we all co- love them and care for them deeply, and we should, and we will continue to do that. But the problem I keep emphasizing is with the adults first and social media primarily with the females and then video games and porn with the males, although, as we just mentioned, the females are catching up on the porn issue as well. Well, uh, thank you very much for your fight. You know, yeah, I sure appreciate you, it. Yeah, Have you're nice welcome. Day. Thank you, Mark. You too. Okay. Thanks, Mark. All righty, let's take uh, Pat Fort Worth. Pat? It's Pam from Connecticut. Oh, um, okay. Did, did we lose Pat? Hello? Oh, yes. Are yeah. you there? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this is my afternoon nap time. I'm sorry, I'm a little groggy. Okay. Um, I, I need I one of those. <laughs> Habits are bad, as we're talking yeah. about sometimes, but good at others. Um, I wanted to tell you what we did when my son uh, was baby, young. He's, he wanted to read so bad. See, that was uh, 47 years ago. And uh, we didn't have all this to deal with. So they had a little, uh, maybe you come up with a solution, uh, audio uh, tapes uh, that they would, a book, a book would come a little tape, and the tape would read the book to the little kid. And when it came term to, time for him to turn the page, it would go beep. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, they even had children's uh, audio tape players, really. And, and, uh, so what happened was my husband would make them up, too. I mean, I know we can't even buy audio tapes anymore unless you buy some old tape over them. But you can't get a tape or you can't do anything. But I'm sure you could think of something <laughs> on, right. on, you know, digital. Whatever. But uh, what happened was uh, by the age of five, he could read anything. He didn't use the CSA method that they tried to do in school. It was all phonics uh, that uh, school I put him in, preschool, Christian daycare preschool who wanted to read that about table and by five he could read anything he didn't know what the words meant and he would say mom why are they laughing i said it was a funny story jimmy it was a funny story see he didn't even they just cut, they were in awe that a five-year-old could read like that now i know you could learn to read uh but that way you could control stuff that they read you know and he would even read to his younger uh brother and and because he couldn't read he would just beep Turn beep, turn page, and, but when he, but he did learn to read, and uh, that's a solution because uh, you, you're talking the uh, uh, other people about the moving pictures. It's keeping them from being able to do well in school, and and uh, if you get them into reading, and maybe you can take them away and add it to a, your book, or come on and tell us what to do, and maybe the Lord will show me because I'm a Christian too, and He does care about those kids, you know. And uh, I must be why I'm fully awake to hear, hear mm-hmm. this show, you know. Uh, and another thing, too, is uh, God TV. Uh, it's mm-hmm. something that you can get put on your cell phone. And they say it's $30 a month, but I don't know if I'm paying it or not. I, I You know, I have other things on there. But um, just constant things will come up that will just amaze you. Because on YouTube, once you get things going that's what comes up you know and and uh um, the, and and then they have a another one called pure flex p-u-r-e-f-l-i-x and and that's the kind of commercials you'll get too <laughs> christian movie commercials you know you may not want to watch them you click uh but still i'm saying uh that there's things out there that we haven't heard of but i did de- I don't think you're going to ever get them to stop watching YouTube, and maybe you shouldn't because you should show them what can be done. I mean, hey, how would you ever know how to run a, a, a fancy microwave if somebody just gave it to you without instructions, you know? I'll run do the lawnmower. There's so much stuff on there that you can learn nowadays, and, and I don't think it, we're going to get them off of it. So why do you got to change what they're watching? And then I think that... Uh, Parents should get together, and maybe the church or so, and have groups of uh, where they take the kids out one uh, one parent at a time, and and do like the physical things you're talking about, and get the endorphins going in their brain, you know, but not football because that becomes a, a spectator sport, or else it becomes a dangerous. It's 
very violent. And I don't think kids should be in danger in their life playing football. It's a disease right now. Uh, you know, and, and they could do all that stuff. Plus, um, well, back in the day, <laughs> and I'm surprised everything's going backwards now, uh, they don't eat right. You were talking about that, too. Uh, and what is going on is that uh, everybody in America, and maybe the world, since I hear they're eating like us, they're becoming magnesium deficient. They might don't mind the cheese on the pizza, and America's full of cheese, but you got to balance it out with magnesium. And, and, and Adele Davis knew this in 1954. There's a whole chapter in her little paperback book. Right. You should probably buy a quarter. Eat right, uh, stay fit. And, and she told it right back then. And, you know, doctors don't even know that now. Uh, Sanjay Gupta has a YouTube, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, that, that guy. And mm-hmm. he said, I'm a cardiologist for 30 years. I didn't know how important magnesium was. And America's all deficient. All the levels are low. Every okay. normal is low. And what people, kids will do is they will pitch fits and, and, and do all this kind of stuff from lack of magnesium. Put them on magnesium in a few hours. They're normal again. Well, okay. Pat, thank you. Thank you so very much. Deanna, to to Pat's point from the very beginning, I'll get this question a lot. What about e-books? And, you know, she was talking about reading. And um, the research is in now that uh, the efficacy of e-book learning is much, much lower than paper printed books. Same book. Research has been done where they'll give people a novel printed on paper and they give another test group the e-version same novel and then they'll do cognitive tests after they just enjoy the novel and the people who read on paper score much much higher than those who read on the e-book and the reason why they score lower with the e-versions for all the reasons that i've been talking about with you over the last couple of hours so to pat's point reading on paper is definitely the way to go cognition is up brain stress is low and so we need to recreate a culture of reading. I'm a big fan. Of course, I write books, so I would like books. But the ones printed on paper are, are much healthier for us. I also read a research paper one time uh, from a neuroscientist in the U.K. who said that the only thing that's been shown to uh, cause an attention span to go back out is reading books. And the ones printed on paper are the ones you want. So – Big fan of reading, and I do it a lot myself. Instead of screening before bed, I read on paper. So highly recommend that. Great. Wonderful. I have a huge book collection. Me too. All righty. Let's, uh, let's take Pam in Connecticut. Pam? Hi, Deanna. I, I want Hi. to thank you for introducing me to Brad Huddleston. Oh, I'm, I'm so impressed with all the information I received um, in these in this episode, um, I went on the website, uh, Brad, and I saw that you and your wife, um, Beth, have a ministry, and mm-hmm. um, I wanted you to describe what that is. Do, do you have a service? I mean, and and I, and I guess I, I wanted to tie into what you were talking about, about how can we restore balance, and I guess for for me now, that means, you know, you meant the higher power, and mm-hmm. and for you, it's Jesus, you know, Yeshua. Mm-hmm. For me, the Trinity, I'm just sort of getting into it. it I don't know if I sound, if it's confusing, but I, I guess I want to know more about your ministry sure. and your faith, because that's basically what we need to have, is faith, right, to get over this addiction hurdle. Right. Well, Pam, thank you. And no, you're making perfectly good sense. Um, our, basically, I'm bivocational, uh, full-time ministry, and have been for quite a number of years. And what that means to me, uh, I'm a credentialed minister, and I'm a Christian. So I, my God is, is Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God. I believe in the Trinity. And I also do science. So I'm in a collaborative mm-hmm. team at the University of South Africa, and it's not a Christian university. And I'm in their neuroscience division, so I just participate in and bring research projects to the table and look at all this stuff that we've been talking about for the last couple of hours. So basically, because of my affiliation with the church, what I mean by that is the body.
body of Christ around the world. Um, Christians own cell phones. Christians play video games. Christians, as we have discussed, are addicted to porn. So not only can I deal with non-Christian people, but because of my ministry, and I'm not a pastor of a church. I'm credentialed as an evangelist, which means I move around. So mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not in one church. I go from church to church of all different denominations. And as I mentioned, I go to schools. They're not all Christian schools either. They're, they're public and government schools around the world, and I work with government entities and law enforcement. So the ministry part um, for me is just my ability to be able to speak on a spiritual level to Christians. And what I would submit to everyone, Christian and non-Christian alike, is that the only groups of people, and there are numbers to support this, the people who have detoxed and gotten better over any drug addiction, including the digital drug addiction, are those who add the spiritual component to it. And so the ministry, and that word simply means to serve. Uh, That's a biblical word that means we serve other people. And the way I serve other people is to bring this knowledge and this information to people in an effort to help them to get over these addictions. And I add definitely I add the spiritual component. So for me, um, it would be uh, asking Jesus, which whom I believe uh, died on a cross and he rose again. Uh, It's what we celebrate, what we call Easter, which I know you're familiar with. I actually believe that history. Historically, I believe scientifically he was raised from the dead. I believe there's evidence for that. And um, I've asked him into my heart, and he completely overhauled me and changed me, as the Bible said. So the standard by which I, I live by are not my science books, although those are very helpful. Uh, the science that we study, even at the university where I just came from, the more we learn, the more questions we have. Um, and I find the ultimate answers uh, in the mystery of God through Jesus. And and so the ministry for me is that's where my caring and compassion comes from. Not to say that non-Christians can't be caring and compassion, could be compassionate. They certainly can. But mine comes from that. And and the, the strength to deal with these horrific, dark things uh, that I encounter and write about and, and hear stories on a regular basis, a weekly basis, the strength that I have to stand up underneath of that without crushing me would be the Lord Jesus and my relationship with him. So the ministry, it allows me to go in and serve people, Christian and non-Christians alike, but I can also speak the language of Christians because I, my standard is the Bible. I grew up reading that, and I have a degree in that as well. So I'm able to to, to flow in that that circle as well. So that's what I mean by ministry. I want to serve others, and that's how I also serve God. I serve the scientific community as well and uh, try to dip into that area and 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 help people. So I hope I've answered your question, Pam. There's no question in, in my mind that uh, my my experience, and there's numbers, groups like Teen Challenge, which is a drug rehabilitation center uh, that David Wilkerson started in New York. If you look at the numbers of the people who have been successfully detoxed and stayed clean, it far, far outweighs the non-Christian. And I'm not saying that the non-Christians aren't doing good work because they are. But I'm just saying numerically, the people who get help and stay clean is much, much higher when you add that spiritual component to it. And that, for me, is ministry. Uh, Is there opportunities for adults to volunteer in programs like this? Yes. um, And is there a need for it? There's a huge need. Sure. Uh, absolutely. Um, groups like I mentioned, Teen Challenge, and there are quite a number of faith-based uh, detox groups. Uh, the the need is overwhelming, Pam. I mean, just in the digital alone, we need to actually start detox programs uh, for, for digital addiction because South Korea has, got, has 400, China has a whole bunch, and other countries, but we don't. So, yes, the, the need is absolutely critical, and a lot of people will go to a group, uh, a faith-based group like that, and they, they have training. They'll put them through certain training so that they can get on board and, and volunteer and, and help in those capacities. There, there sure is plenty of opportunity to help in these areas. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, and you feel free to email me, Pam. Go to the, go to bradhuddleston.com. There's a contact button up there. You feel free to email me if I can make any references for you. I'd be happy to do that. Thank you so much. And thank sure you, Sure, you will. Thank you, Pam. Bye. Bye-bye. All righty. Let's take uh, Lark in Texas. Lark, welcome. Oh, hi, Deanna. Hi. And Brad. Hi, Lark. Well... 
I've been active in the chat room today. I don't know why. I think it's because I had my nap before the show started. But, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I have to say that I've enjoyed uh, every minute of this. Thank you, Lars. The truth is, Brad, that I think that, you know, modern technologies have proven themselves in many cases to be rather dirty. And uh, I include, of course, and specifically this so-called um, information technology, this world of virtual reality and so forth. And so i am actually been peddling a word that I call techno-slavery because I think this is exactly the path that we're on. And uh, I make note in the chat room, for instance, that just the craze for innovation in these so-called green technologies alone, that would be genetics, robotics, information, and nanotech, should serve as a big red flag that we're on a mighty slippery slope. And when we talk about technology, we have to uh, understand that technology begins with language. And uh, then it uh, uh, proceeds to our love affair with machines. Today, the marriage of man and machines, the uh, portent for uh, transhumanism. So what do you think? Do you think techno-slavery is a good word to uh, be aware of for a lot of us? Yes, there's no question about that, Lark. Um, I often, when I'm doing the spiritual talk surrounding this, I mean, I'm dealing with the science, there's a verse of scripture that I talk about where it says in Corinthians that all things are permissible for me, and God is not opposed even for us to have technology. However, he says not all things are beneficial, and I will not become a slave to anything. And so anything that enslaves us, and in my area of specialty, it's it's addiction, digital addiction in particular. The enslavement is global. It has happened with such rapidness that my mind I just can't hardly get her, get my head around how quickly the whole globe has changed because what I do is is global and things I mean we talked for a long time about virtual reality well I'll tell you what scares me is 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 artificial intelligence the 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 speed we thought that augmented reality and virtual reality would be around for a long time and that would become the key thing well it's been supplanted by artificial intelligence overnight and 5G is going to accelerate that because of the low latency and the things that will be required to run the, those things at that speed. And it's all of that spells more dopamine, more epinephrine, norepinephrine, and these things that stimulate the brain, which translates into mass global addiction and ultimately mind control. So whoever people are following, they can control them because uh, they're enslaved to them. And so that sounds conspiratorial, but once you have given over – your emotions and your mind to addiction, somebody else is in charge, and and that's just the reality. It's the way it's always been. But now you have children with phones, and you have grandparents. I believe, I don't have numbers for this yet, but one of my possible research projects I'll bring to the table in the future is this. I believe that the fastest-growing age demographic of digital addiction are our grandparents. And so they've got the children. They've got the teenagers, the millennials, their parents, and now it's the grandparents that we're seeing getting hopelessly lost to Candy Crush and Netflix, etc. So there is definitely that element of mass enslavement. There's, there's no question about it. Technology is the, the medium, the tool that's being used. How much of that is done on purpose? I mentioned earlier in the program uh, companies such as Dopamine Labs who do – uh, definitely do neuroscience with uh, the intended purpose of generating larger and larger quantities of dopamine to keep people coming back to apps and things like that. That is just a fact and a reality of marketing these days. Um, I don't know that if there's a combined conspiracy other than to say that there's a dark force out there that as a Christian, I would understand that as, as the devil uh, and his minions. But uh, be that as it may, on, just on an earthly level, it is definitely happening. Uh, I don't know that it's a, a coordinated effort, but in individual efforts, uh, it is happening with various companies, and I see it in the global community around the world. So, uh, you know, Brad, I'm writing I see, books I, about it. I see 
forgive me. I, I want to conclude because there's That's other okay. callers perhaps. But, sure. Uh, these techno crazies, as I call them, I equate to unwitting dupes and useful idiots. Agree. What do you think? You think yeah. Do you think Stalin and Lenin and those people understood, perhaps? Oh, I, how I well definitely do. And I, no crazies I, and unwitting dupes and useful idiots could serve their cause? I think the Marxists on the progressive left know exactly how to manipulate large numbers of people, just like Stalin did. Absolutely, I do. And technology is now the way we communicate. I mean, I'm sitting here using some very high-tech stuff to participate in this radio program. I'm, I'm trying to use it for for good things, but definitely I think for the nefarious causes, it's being used on purpose. There's no question about that. Well, thanks for much, uh, so much for your uh, responses. Thank yeah, you, Deanna. Sure, Lark. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks, Lark. Yeah. All righty, let's take Chris near Las Vegas. Well, good afternoon, Deanna and Brad. So glad Hi, to Chris. have you. Uh, Whoops, okay. After the, after the, after the break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks, Chris. Homeowners, are you in foreclosure, expecting to be served with a foreclosure lawsuit, or suspect your lender has coerced you into an illegal mortgage transaction? A huge number of mortgages made in the last 10 years have legal issues and are possibly defective. State laws and the U.S. Supreme Court have upheld that defective mortgage documents are grounds for foreclosure defense and for counterclaims in favor of the homeowner. If your mortgage has been sold or assigned since closing the loan, it may be defective and you may be paying the wrong party and the lender may not have standing or the right to foreclose or collect payments under the law. If you would like to know if your mortgage is legal or not or know if you are paying the right party, we can help. Our initial consultations are free of charge. We are not attorneys. We are legal researchers and work closely with experienced lawyers who know how to help you find the evidence to help you keep your home. Call toll-free 1-855-2-KEEP-IT. That's 1-855, the number 2, keep it today. Many people tell us about their experience with Extendivite. Just listen to what Glenn has to say. Prior to taking it, I had diabetic neuropathy. The Extendivite reduced that significantly. Acid reflux was reduced. I had athlete's foot, very severe. Trimmed that down to about 75% dandruff. Almost completely gone. I had a a simple neuralgia at the base of my skull. I was having migraines reduced by about 90%. Heart palpitations, my heart would kind of stall out. I would skip a beat. Very uncomfortable. And when walking from downstairs going to sleep, by the time I got to the bedroom, which is just one flight of stairs, my heart was pounding, coming out of my chest. My vision was blurry. This completely solved that problem. Great product. Thanks. Tell us your story. Get Extendivite today. Call 1-877-928-8822 or visit heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extendivite. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Welcome 
Welcome back. This is Deanna, and our guest has been Brad Huddleston, and his website is bradhuddleston.com. Buy his book, Digital Cocaine, and read it. Okay, we we did have uh, Chris from Las Vegas, or near Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm still here, Deanna. Thank you very much, Brad. Uh, I'll make my points very clear. I think I'll leave a little bit of time for Brad to close out. But a couple of things. One, the DSM-5, Diagnostic Symptom Manual, is void for vague. And you will find this very clearly in a recent court decision. It doesn't address the DSM-5, but it's the same premise of lacking specificity for the word terms, and they're, they're all nebulous. Uh, having no meaning whatsoever that is with specificity. And that is, um, you'll find it under Psychopolitical Warfare by Kenneth Goff is a very important read, exposing the fraud of psychiatry, psychology, and mental healing. And also, in a recent case by Judge Tranga called Ansa L. Hadey, H-A-D-A-Y, et al., versus Thomas the second cable, K-A-B-L-E, uh, et al., uh, the terror screening center director, and declaring the terror screening database to be void for vague because there's no specificity in the 16 different qualification terms they supposedly apply their uh, threat analysis under. And this is really, really critical. Um, this thing is, is so dangerous that we must be very, very careful. And I can see in Las Vegas here that we watch very carefully that we see the same things on the video games here where people sit there apparently mesmerized or hypnotized by the video flicker rates on the screen and the addiction of putting more money in to keep the satisfaction of the lust for the possible win of stuff uh, in action while they smoke and sometimes drink. But I see this proliferating more amongst the female species, uh, it's quite observable in my estimation, and I'm wondering if you have seen any qualifiers that uh, support this premise. Thank you, sir, very, very much. Well, Chris, what I can tell you from what we've already said, definitely the females are growing uh, in the pornography problem. There's no question. They've also grown in video gaming, too. They, they have a whole genre now called pink games where they hire – females to code the games to target female video game players while they're not at the level of the men it's definitely growing so i concur with that regarding the dsm-5 i certainly have not waited for the people in the ivory tower to offer solutions uh, many of us have just taken the bull by the horns and written our own books and going out there and instead of waiting we're just going to go ahead and help people so that's my contribution to that and uh again i would conclude just by saying that we, we need a spiritual renewal and uh, we need more people like Deanna in the airwaves, which I'm grateful for people like her who, and this network who are not afraid to be true Americans with free speech. And, uh, and uh, I appreciate this opportunity so much, Deanna. Well, You're here. It, it's been my honor, to, uh, totally my yeah. honor. I just have oh, – thank you so much, Chris. Um, yeah, thank you, Chris to have you on the program and we'll do it again let's do this again yep happy to deanna thank you thank you bless you yeah thank bless you, you so too. much okay bye-bye now bye-bye bye-bye listeners talk with you next week
Homeowners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue and your property can be restored to you, and your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855, the number 2, keep it today.